Sports Blitz Live is on the air with full coverage of the Auburn Tigers. To the five. Touchdown, Auburn! The Alabama Crimson Tide. And everything college and high school sports. Now, let's join Andy, Brett, Randy, and Luke for this edition of Sports Blitz Live. Good Tuesday evening out there to everybody, and welcome into Sports Blitz Live, presented by JR Sports Bar and Grill. Sunshine, heating, and air here on this Tuesday evening. We'd love to hear from you. If you got something that you'd like to call us and talk to us about, 256 234 6221. You can always comment away there on Facebook Live. Uh, Luke, good to see you, man, here on a Tuesday. We got a lot to talk about, man. I mean, a bunch going on right now. Uh, obviously, you're back from the Final Four. We'll, we'll, we'll dive into that. Your experience, uh, you know, a bucket list item. Uh, all, of our, all of us sports fanatics, we got the Masters coming up this weekend, and that's a bucket list item for a lot of people, whether, you know, you're a big golfer or not. I know some people going over uh, this coming up uh, weekend that our big golfers have never been before. I've been fortunate to have already been twice. You know, just going once would have been <clears throat> good enough. But I went, I, I loved it so much, I found a way to go back the very next year. And, uh, but I hadn't been back. But it, it's, uh, you know, being able to go and experience, especially when you have a team in it, that makes it a, it, that's, that makes it an, a different experience. But uh, World Series, Super Bowl, National Championship football games, now, you know, the Final Four, it's all, it's all bucket list stuff, and uh, uh, so Luke, you had already planned to go out to Arizona and be at the Final Four, whoever was in in the thing. It was going to be something you and your son did, and but Alabama makes that uh, that run through the NCAA tournament, make it to the Final Four, and you know they ran up against a, a juggernaut. And there's nothing really else you can say about it. No, uh, look, first and foremost, UConn deserves championship. They're the best team in the tournament. Um, if uh, you know. Doesn't always play out that way, but it did this it year. It doesn't, and, and again, I, I can appreciate that. I mean, I, the best team won. That's kind of what I like. I mean, I, I, I don't like, you know, the Loyola Chicago's getting all the way to the Final Four when I know they're not really good enough. And um, UConn proved they were good enough. I feel like, honestly, with the exception of NC State, I know NC State's kind of like Loyola Chicago in a way. Um, that's one thing I don't like about – I'll say this, the NC State fans that were there were awesome. I really enjoyed interacting with them, um, and I appreciated that they showed up. Uh, if you want to talk about fans that were there, Purdue probably had 60% of the fans there. Wow. I'm not kidding. It was bananas how many Purdue people were there. I mean, and Purdue is not this gigantic school. No, they're not. It was in West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, but they had a but ton of rabid. folks there. They're rabid. And they're big basketball folks. And um, – then I would say Alabama and NC State were pretty neck and neck, and then probably a big drop off, and then UConn, which is kind of weird to say, uh, because UConn was clearly the best team out there. But um, I don't think they have fatigue or anything. I just don't think they have the numbers yeah, they of fans. Don't, right, right. Um, but I was really pleased with the number of Alabama fans that went out there, uh, and I was just—it's just a different experience. I would highly encourage uh, a lot of people. I did have some Alabama fans say to me, you know. It's really expensive to get out there, so what I'm going to do is just go if we win the cha go to the championship. And I said, well, here that's – I said, to me, you're missing the best part. If you ask me, Being there with I would rather teams. be there for the Final Four than the championship. Now, it, had Alabama beaten UConn, and again, I have no problem saying what I said to you off air, we would have been incredibly lucky. UConn's better than – Alabama. They're better than everybody. They're beating everybody in the tournament by double right. digits the last <clears throat> two years. They're incredible. Um, I appreciate it as an Alabama football fan. I've seen this kind of dominance, and I'm like, dude, y'all got it. And um, every, But had we been fortunate enough to beat them, it doesn't mean they're unbeatable. It just, you know, Creighton beat them this year, so right. a couple other teams beat them. Only had, four beat them. But had, only three. Yeah, three, that's right. That's right. Had we beaten them, um, I would have stayed for the championship game. But if you had told me I could only go to one or the other. Saturday or Monday, I would say I'm going to Saturday <clears> because <throat> – even though it was Purdue and, and NC State, and I don't have any dog in the fight, it was cool being there. You know, I was, um, it, it was just neat to be in that environment, and right. um, everybody was super nice. Uh, loved it out in Phoenix. It's kind of cool. I'll say this because, uh, you know, the game started at like Alabama game started at almost six that time. Right, right. So when I was done, 
I was able to, you know, we, my son and I were able to leave the arena. Took forever. By the, that's the worst thing about State Farm Arena is getting out. Yeah. Um, they have no <clears throat> plans. It's terrible. It's poorly organized. Everything else is great. Right. Very You're poorly. talking about at the stadium. At the stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like <clears throat> somebody said, oh, yeah, there's going to be about 75,000 people that need to get home. And I'm telling you, it felt like it was 100,000. You know, I, you know, when I, I was out there for the Auburn-Oregon game, and, you know, after the game was over, you know, you you know, you know, win, you kind of hang around, you're doing some stuff, so you, you're not in a hurry to leave. But um, I, best I can remember, it still was a log jam, everybody trying to get – you know, and it's in this vast open area. I mean, but you got just certain roads that you can get in and out of. It's changed <clears> – <throat> All right, so that was 2010. It's probably right. changed a good bit because, like, Glendale's growing. They're building a uh, resort. Uh, right. V-A-I, and it's going to be, like, this <clears> massive <throat> thing. It's going to be awesome. Well, they needed to because the stadium was just stuck out in the middle yeah. of nothing. Yeah, and they've I got mean. some more stuff around it now, but the the everybody was trying to get an Uber or a Lyft, and it was just mass chaos. And finally, you know, this other guy came up to us and said, look, can we – if you're going to downtown – Let's me and you try and, you know, get ahead of somebody. Right. And because we, you know, I'm out there with my son. It's starting to get a little chilly out in the desert at night. Right. You know? I didn't bring a coat or anything. And so we uh, we found this Uber driver that was coming in. And she goes, well, I've got a ride. But she said they're, they're walking this way, but it could be 20 or 30 minutes. And I said, look, we got $100 cash if you will take us to downtown Phoenix right this minute. Yeah. And she said, cancel ride, got in the car, and we took off. There you go. So um, Cash is still keen. Yeah, it's thankfully. But um, so anyway, uh, it, it was a blast. I mean, I highly recommend anybody going. Uh, next year's in San Antonio. I might just sign up for it again. Uh, again, I hope Alabama goes, but I don't know. I don't know anybody can predict you know, it right now. Basketball, man, You unless you're somebody that's got history like UConn or, or, or something like that, it, it's – you know, and, I, and I've said this before, I think Auburn now, but I said it to you on Twitter the other night. I said I think both of our programs are in great shape. I think they're not going anywhere. Uh, they're both, uh, you know, winning 25-plus games a year. And, you know, that just gives you an opportunity to make a run. But it's all about your draw in the NCAA tournament. It's about how you're playing at the time. Uh, and you got to get some breaks, man. I mean, you think about, you know, I look at Auburn's run and in the first round and beating New Mexico State and then – you know, they, they hammered North Carolina and, and, and Kansas, but then you get to that Kentucky game, has, I mean, it goes to overtime. you got to figure out ways. There's going to be some time you got to win. Alabama had to win a close game against North Carolina and to get over that hump. Uh, and then they, they played Clemson and, and played pretty doggone well. But, man, in basketball, like, the ball can rim out at a key moment. A, a foul can go your, the wrong way and it changed momentum. It's just so daggum hard. To get back to that, to, to to make it that far. I mean, it is. It's not only that. I think um, you know. I'm already seeing or to way too early top twenty <clears> fives. <throat> you know, which I love to read. Usually, I used to really love to read these. I don't anymore. You don't know who's going to be on well, who's team. Well, they mean anymore. so much less now. I mean, the only thing I know for sure about Alabama's team next year is Aaron Estrada cannot come back. Uh, and I, I guess I should also say Darian Reed, uh, Aiden Cheryl, Nas Cunningham, and. Uh, Mallet for the transfer from Pepperdine. Right. They should all be on the team because their signees are and Mallet's a transfer. That's all I know. I mean, you don't know if Sears is coming back. You don't know if uh, Grant Nelson's coming back. Pringle's coming back. You, we assume Jaron Stevenson's coming back. We assume Rylan Griffin's coming back. Um, you don't know that, though. But you don't know. And and so it's really hard to do well, it. Well, what do you think about Grant Nelson coming out? I mean, to me, this is the whole the whole <laughs> world we live in now. I mean, you just got finished playing in a Final Four semifinal game. The first thing you say is, well, you know, I hope I'm back at Alabama, but we'll see. You know, and it's like – and it kind of leaves well, the door open. Well, that was Noe Oates who said that. Grant actually well, said – Grant Nelson actually said, "This, I hope this gives us motivation for next year. And everybody took that as, oh, he's definitely coming back. Well, I thought I, I read like, where Grant, Grant – you know, I thought he said – No, Grant Nelson it, said, we don't – no, excuse me, Nate Oates said, yeah. we're, Grant probably elevated his stock in this tournament – we will see after this, you know, but we hope he's back. That's what Nate Oates said. Yeah, I thought I saw where he – well, somebody interviewed him and he said, you know, uh, and he – I thought he made a comment about, you know, we'll see how it goes uh, in exploring opportunities. But I, I think that's what they do now. I think that's what players do. That's what is all it, of them do. Not right. But he, that, that, I don't like it. I mean, no. that's the bottom line is that's my point, is you just win as, about as far as you can go 
and then I'm gonna I'm, let me see what else I can find out here. I'm I'm willing to sacrifice maybe, you know, leaving this team that could come back and be on another run to maybe go somewhere else and have more personal success, but maybe not as good. And I know I get it. I mean, it's the world we live in. You're no, trying to make I, I the most like money, but and, but and and I saw you know we'll talk about this. I'm sure Aiden Holloway got in the transfer portal. No shock saw, there, by the way. Yeah, no. I saw an Auburn fan boy say, "I hate the transfer portal," and I was like. Yeah, I'm sure maybe you do right now. You didn't hate it when Jani Broom came or Chad Baker Mazzara or Chaney Johnson. Well, any, both, no, both sets of fans I, say that. I, no, I know. I'm just yeah. saying that's how right. we we can't – I'm trying really hard not to be hypocritical about it. Right. Because, yes, I hate the idea that there is so much unknown about coming back. And that's why – that again, well, It leaves everybody in limbo. Well, and they need to make a daggum deadline for everybody involved. Like as soon as the season's over, you got you got a week or you got a two weeks to decide what the heck you're gonna do, and then you move on. I mean, and if you want to get out, get out, and then I'm gonna go find somebody else to come in and bring and bring them in your place. Here's the one thing that that did sort of bring me back to earth a little bit. I sent you guys, um, a, uh, I don't know, is it a TikTok? I guess a TikTok. I, yeah. A, I don't do TikTok. I don't want anybody stealing all the secrets. No, I mean, uh, but no, uh, there was a TikTok of a, a guy that played for Tommy Tuberville at Auburn, and he's now a coach, a high school coach somewhere. I don't really know, but at one time he was head coach at St. Paul's. And in this, he tells the story about how when Tommy Tuberville came to Auburn, uh, he went to go talk to him. He, he, he was called to Tommy Tuberville's office. And He'd just been hired, by the way. Tuberville had just yep. been hired. Right. Like, I don't think the Correct. guy had ever met him. He had. And he sits down, and Tommy Tuberville said, uh, you're so-and-so. Um, here's the deal. If you think – if you're ever going to run out of the tunnel in Jordan-Hare Stadium, it's going to be out of the opposing tunnel because I'm releasing you. Sure. And so – but – and that was – so that was 1999. So my thought was, you know – everybody's been pushing players out for a long time, right. sort of willy-nilly, and now the players are getting the payback. I don't like it. I, right. I think both ways are wrong, but um, I understand when I hear stories like that, I understand how some of these players hear jaded stories, and they're like, i got to go get mine. Again, I don't like it. No, I don't, saying, I don't either. I don't either. I think, um, you know, when, <clears throat> when a head coach comes to a program, uh, they inherit – you know what they inherit, and to make room for whatever, you know, I'm. You look at what Nick Saban did in '07, and you know the, he, he takes a team that had a bad culture, and you know I'm sure he forced a lot of guys out. And you know Turville comes in, and that guy didn't play. He said he even said it. He said I was a a terrible football player on the team. I was like way down the depth chart. Now how he handled it, I totally am with you. I, I don't agree with how that. I mean, to me, you got to be a little bit more compassionate toward, toward people, regardless of how that works. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you make room because you're trying to get other people on the roster or whatever. To me, this is different in the fact that you're talking about guys that are this – is, this is not somebody way down the depth chart that's not playing. These are your, your guys that got you there and that are getting taken care of. They're already getting deals and already getting stuff, and they get finished making a run, and it's still, hey, I'm going to look around. You know, I'm going to explore options. I'm going to see if I can get more, which, again, we live in the USA. It gives you the opportunity to do that. But that's where the NCAA made the mistake. There's got to be some rules and regulations. Even in pro sports, they have windows of time, and they have uh, you got to be holding the contracts and things like that. That's why we said it on Auburn Blitz today. All of college sports are just in a complete upheaval right now. Yeah, All of I mean, even UConn, who was so incredibly dominant, they, uh, I think that – Newton kid was a transfer in from Rutgers. Right, right. And another transfer that was in, and Had so two grad students on that team. You know, they everybody's doing it, and then it's what's hard is trying to make that team <clears throat> gel very, very quickly because you have all these random parts. And again, that's why I'm really hoping that next year uh, Grant Nelson comes back, Sears. I hope they find a way to compensate them nil wise as best as they can. Um, but I did have the thought too, and I mean this would go for anybody, but it just made me think about it with Aiden Holloway. Because, uh, and again, I'm not trying to pick on him at all, but I'm saying, I wonder, what does he do with NIL money he's already received? Does he get to keep know. all that? I, I guess so. I would think so. And because there is no contract. No, there's no contract. Um, so that's what all these schools are dealing with, man. I mean, I, you got to be very careful about giving. So you know, it just it it's 
it really is tough on a school. I mean, and, and tough on a coach and tough on a fan base. I mean, frankly, you know, everybody says the, the players have all the leverage. Well, they really don't because the school gives them an opportunity to play on a team and they provide the facilities and they provide the, the organization. So really they don't have all the <coughs> leverage. Now, again, you want, if you're good enough, you can kind of shop yourself around and go kind of pick and people will pick you up. But, you know, that's where the whole boat's being missed on this thing and it's being diminished is that they're playing for a school still. And if you were to just take all the stadiums away and all the colleges away, where, where are all these players playing? Where, where, where would – out in the street? In, in, a, in a pickup game, that, that's where I think it's got to be reeled back in a little bit. The pendulum of power has swung too far, just like it – look, we see it all the time in politics, you know, and, it, and it's gotten – the rhetoric's gotten so bad, and I think that's the case with this now. You know, you, you have a – if you have a Republican president, everybody says, you know, bad mouths them on the Democratic side, and then they get power and they t send the, all the pendulum power the other way right. instead of trying to make it the best you can for the most amount of people. And, and I think that's what we need to consider here. Try to make this situation. People. Somebody's, listen, nobody ever likes to say this, Brett. Somebody's always going to get the shaft. And yep. it sucks if it's you. Yeah. Uh, there's right. no question. Right. And somebody's always going to get the be a benefit that you, you think they don't deserve. And that's great if it's you. But I think the system, the best system you can have is quit worrying about the the most uh, the the smallest of chances things that can happen to somebody and just do the best you can do for the most think, amount of people. You know, we people yearn, civilized people yearn for, for law and order. They yearn for some type of organization in a way they can, <clears throat> I think that's why everybody's in such upheaval. It's not that anybody wants somebody not to have an opportunity. It's just, okay, it can't just be wide open and everybody do what they want to do. You know, it's not get out here on the highways and take all the speed limit signs down. And if you want to go 150, go 150. So if you want to go 10, you go 10. It don't work like that. You have to have rules and regulations to kind of keep things in check. It doesn't mean people can't have opportunities. It doesn't mean players can't take advantage. See, this is where NIL got skewed from the start. NIL was supposed to be get a player on campus. They can go out and figure out ways to, to make money and, and have opportunities off their name, Im image, and likeness. Now this thing's turned into, hey, I'm going to give you NIL money to come to our college. That's the way it started. And, that, and again, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's it was very difficult from the to beginning. watch. Other. Yeah, it, it has been. And then, you know, we, we had bad leadership. Um, but now, going, coming full circle, I still say the Final Four was a ton <laughs> of fun. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, would highly recommend it. I do think it would be great, take though. Take binoculars. You know, the, what now? Take binoculars. Yeah, take binoculars. Look, <laughs> my, I really was worried that, you know, because I had just bought seats through this package and I thought right. they'd be better. They were pretty good seats. They were, like, pretty close to the floor in the sense of um, that it was well, like see, it row, goes way it, out It was like, like row 32, and I was like, that's not bad. Holy cow, was it a long way from the floor. Right. Because, not, see, what they do with the student sections is – the students from Purdue were in front of me first and the and NC State on the other side of the court. Then when th that game was over, all those students had to get out. And students from Alabama would have been where I was if I hadn't moved seats. And the students from UConn were on the other side. And then, you know, it's um, – so I guess if you, unless you have a ticket as a student, an actual ticket, you can't watch both games, I, I'm assuming. Um, but right. And I like the idea of having the students there. I do. I think that's cool, and I think that's great for the students. But, man, doing this thing, and, you know, I was looking around going, I don't see any real empty seat. I don't see anywhere for me to go. Right. You know, I, I was right. looking for somewhere else to go to watch it a little better. And um, I was like, "There's." I would have thought that there'd be somebody, maybe an Alabama fan didn't come in, in a second, you know, whatever. Man, everybody was there. Were you was able like, to this... sell your tickets for the championship game? Well, what I did was I gave them to my son and let him take a friend. Oh, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> and um, if Alabama had won, I said, I mean, when it got tied, I said, I got some news for you, Trude. He said, I know if if Alabama wins, you're you're going to take the seat. He said, that's great. I said, no, I'm going to take both seats because I'm going to need the space. I said, because <laughs> I'm going to be elbowing people. You know, and I said, uh, you, you might be at the house. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's good. I mean, good for him. So, you got to go. Um, and you would think 
with so many, I guess, fans of four schools, that when you eliminate four schools out of the deal and it comes down to two, they, it would, they wouldn't I be could move good. around for yep. the Bama game. Some NC State fans <laughs> left. I'll say this. I don't think many Purdue people left. They wanted to stay. They wanted to see who they thought they'd I think be they're still out there. They, they might be. I mean, so. they were <laughs> everywhere. Well, um, but, um, <clears throat> you know, and some NC State people, that, and that's how I got the better seat. Right. Um, but, yeah, we, you know, we can talk about the game more later if you want to. I know we got to go to break. Yeah, uh, we're, we're going to keep it here for three more minutes, and then we're going to roll out. We did an extended opening segment here uh, talking about the, the final four. Kind of run down everything else that we're going to talk about. <laughs> Auburn signs a new apparel deal uh, with Nike. Uh, we'll discuss that. Um, and a, a lot of other things that are going on in the world of just college athletics in general. Of course, uh, uh, you know, basketball being over, we're talking about recruiting. Uh, A-Day for Auburn this past Saturday. You have Alabama's A-Day coming up this Saturday. Uh, obviously, Cam Coleman uh, kind of stole the show on offense. We, we weren't shocked by that. But, uh, man, what about Towns Magoo coming over from Auburn High School? Seven for seven. Uh, on field goals, one for 58 yards. Uh, uh, it's amazing to see small guys have the legs punch, that they yeah. have uh, on that. So um, kind of a way too early uh, uh, top 25. Again, it's so hard to determine what that is or what that looks like now because you don't know who's coming, who's going, whatever. Uh, so it's hard to discuss on that. We'll talk some uh, SEC baseball because, uh, man, you got um, – Alabama and Auburn. Auburn's only won two games in conference play. Alabama's only won four. This is a brutal, brutal league. Um, and then, of course, uh, when we come back from this break, uh, who, who would have thought John Calipari would be heading to Arkansas? And what does that mean for Kentucky and who, who's up for that? So we talked a little bit about that uh, today on the show. We'll talk about it here in just a minute. We'll go ahead and go. To our first break, we're a little bit behind, so stay tuned. More to come right after this. Forbes Auto Sales Highway 280 in Kellerton, Alabama is home-owned and home-operated. If you're looking for tires, they have it. If you're looking for a vehicle, they have them. Great selection. Always out looking for more just for you, the customer. And if you're looking for service, whether you buy the vehicle from them or whether you buy the vehicle somewhere else, they do service work and got a great crew there. Keep this in mind. Don't you go by Forbes Auto Sales on Highway 280 in Kellerton today. What's the verdict? Can't fix your heat pump. Need a new one. Uh-oh. What are you thinking? I'm thinking Dyke. Call on Kevin Kill in Sunshine Heating and Air at 256-825-4849, Central Alabama's premier Dyke dealer. So what's he thinking? Oh, he's thinking Daikin. Daikin, one of the top selling in the world. Now I'm thinking Daikin. Daikin, comfort for life. If you're seeing the American cockroach, throw up the red flag. Ladybugs, throw up the red flag. Ants and swarming termites, throw up the red flag. And kudzu bugs, throw up the red flag. That's red flag pest control. So the caution is on. Call Red Flag Pest Control today. I'm Scott Davis with Red Flag Pest Control. Call me today, 256-825-0430. Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. Hello, I'm Karen Chanel, your State Farm agent in Alexander City, Alabama and the greater Lake Martin area. I want to talk to you a little bit today about your discounts. How many of you are entitled to discounts that you may or may not be receiving? One of the easiest discounts on your homeowner's insurance is that of having a fire extinguisher. Coupled with a deadbolt lock and a smoke alarm, that gives you an automatic discount on your homeowner's policy. 
Hi, this is Brian Bice with Bice Motors. With our all-star lineup of Dodge trucks, Jeep, SUVs, and Chrysler cars, we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience. Our sales team offers competitive pricing, and we back up all sales with service department second to none. Bice Motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Visit Bice Motors at 2133 Cherokee Road in Alexander City. Welcome back, everyone, to Sports Blitz Live, presented by JR Sports Bar and Grill and Sunshine Heating and Air. You can see the logo on the screen. If you're watching online, uh, on, on social media, or on TV, uh, Sunshine Heating and Air been with us a long time. Call them, 256-825-4849. Uh, if you have heating and air issues or if you want a new unit, make sure to call on him. Uh, Kevin Kill and his staff got a lot of comments, a lot of them from John. He, he likes to roll right along with us uh, through all this. Um, that boy knows where the emojis are. There is no question, <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Uh, he says, uh, I'll pick up one here. Uh, he says, Luke, can Sears come back to yes. UA? Uh, he got a COVID year, and um, he can definitely come back. I, again, uh, I've spoken. I don't think he goes to the NBA. I don't, I don't, he's not going to get drafted. Well, it, it, you know, it's like Jimmy Stein Tells me all the time, you know, not not the NBA doesn't have to like you. One team has to like you. That's right. And so I don't think he gets drafted in the first two. I rounds, wouldn't so. think so either. But um, and I hope that. But I've also talked to uh, somebody who works with Yay Alabama, and they say we're going to do everything we can do to keep him. You know, sure, we're going to try and give him the best. He's the reason y'all yeah. made the run. And, I mean, and if he comes back next year, and you know, maybe they have a little more help with this incoming class. Um, and maybe we have a little more help on the inside. Grant Nelson's got another year of polishing. Right. Grant Nelson certainly stepped his game up towards the end of the year. I mean, he played really well at the first year. And then you can he, tell he hit a wall. Yeah. And then he this backside of the year, he's played really well against some big time competition. I think that helps his confidence. Um, <clears> and <throat> I think that uh, it would be great to have them back. He can come back. Grant Nelson can come back. The only thing, again, I know who the only person I know who cannot be back is Aaron Estrada. He has used up all of his eligibility, including the COVID year. Um, <clears throat> talking about Sears, if you take him off that team, again, it, you just you see the difference that one guy can make uh, for anybody. So uh, the, the veteran teams that are able to keep a majority of their players, you see them kind of have an advantage going in the next. This is where we are in college basketball now. But, I mean, he was critical. Um, in almost every game, he was a mainstay 20 to 25 point a night guy. And you take him off Alabama's team, as good as Alabama was this year, they're not that good. And you and you can say the same about Auburn with Janai Broom. You take Janai Broom off that team, I mean, I'm not I, – I definitely tell you Auburn doesn't win 27 games without him. So that tells you how important one guy can be to your run in, in NCAA. You can have a good team. But one guy usually stirs a drink. And I'll tell you, you know, I think that for the most part, these teams were pretty experienced juxtaposed to what we see a lot of times in college basketball right now. Like, you know, a lot of these guys for Purdue had been there for a while. But no doubt. Uh, Zach Eady had been well, there. Well, last year they had just gotten beat in the first round. That's right. Now they're in the final four. I mean, Virginia wins a national championship. And then a couple of years later, they get ousted by 16 seed. No, it was the, oh, was it it the was before. Oh, was it the reverse? I think it was actually uh, they lost the 16, then won the title. Okay, well, ver, ver, vice yeah. versa. My point is, is that's how fast you can flip it or be on the other side of it. Well, definitely. And, um, you know, UConn, even though, again, I mentioned they had some transfers and that Stefan Castle, who's awesome, he's also a freshman, they're pretty experienced. I mean, they right. had, and Alabama, though they had a lot of new faces, a lot of those new faces have played some bas a lot of basketball. And so, I mean, it's, it's a, they had experience enough compared to what you see to in college basketball for the most well, that's part. That's why I think so many fans are ignorant out there because, I, again, I said this the other day. You know, Alabama fans couldn't wait to get on Twitter after they lost, to, and I'm not saying all of them, but to bash and then hit Auburn fans about and, and tweet yell and all that crap and then vice versa when – Auburn does the same thing. They want to. They want to take a pot. Just enjoy your team, man. I mean, enjoy the moment because it ain't guaranteed you ever be back. Now you hope. You know, Dan Marino hoped he'd have gone back to the Super Bowl. He never did. 
Uh, it, it just, but we are so caught up in, hey, let me get let me get one up on somebody on social. At the end of the day, nobody gives a crap. You know, take the moment and enjoy it because, like you said, I mean, one or two players, and you don't know who comes in next year that can make a big difference. You know, I definitely think Auburn felt like Aiden Holloway, being a five-star McDonald All-American, was going to come in. And look, he was given every opportunity to perform. He's in the portal. It's not Auburn's fault. It's not Auburn's fault he couldn't get out there and and, and get off the dribble and get off of a, a defender and find a way to create his own shot. And he went, you know, uh, many nights only scoring two, four, maybe even six points and not having any assist. Um, but the first thing that most players want to do now, instead of saying, I'm going to stay in this program and grow and get better, I'm going to take my ball and go somewhere else. Hey, I wish him nothing but the best. Maybe he finds a program that he fits into a little bit better. Uh, but most of the time we've seen it in football, Luke, these guys that get in the portal over and over and over and over, eventually you need to probably stop and pause and look in the mirror and say, it's really not all the teams or the programs. It's probably got a lot to do with me and what I do. It is, but uh, and I think a lot of them do it because they just shop themselves around. I mean, that's do. probably the way Holloway looks at it because, again, he is um, – you look at it the way you look at potentially uh, a buying a used car at a, at a value. You know, right. it's like, look, I don't have a lot of uh, miles on me right now, and I've, no I've been under, yeah. I'm under, I've underperformed, sure, but you know that uh, I've got a lot of. What would luxuries. you like to see happen? This is what we always talk about: the way things are. What do you think's got to happen to 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 get things wrangled in? What would you like to see happen? I mean, the, if you were sitting on the committee. And you were in, you were asked, okay, you're sitting in a room, and they go, all right, Luke, what do you think we need to do to get this wrangled in? I think the first thing you'd have to do is say, you know, this this transfer portal thing where it's not open both ways, I guess yet, but it's it is open in the sense you can enter at any time, right? And so then when you enter it, you can start taking, I guess, offers. Well, I thought you could only get in it at certain amounts of time, certain times. I mean, people, it, the the portal is the windows open and the, closed. I, I know, but I think the the portal to actually move okay. is open and closed. Right. I think that you can get in the portal at any time. Sure. You just don't know what your destination is. Right, right. I right. mean, I've seen uh, for weeks now people have been getting in the portal already. So, and see, I hate that because if somebody who let's say a team disappoints um, and they a guy but there's a really good player on that team and they want to get in the portal well they get in the portal while everybody else is in the ncaa tournament yeah. and you know some teams like uconn nc state bama purdue are like hey we're trying to do this march to the final four but we also got to be in contact kind of like with pepperdine, player like x the pepperdine kid yeah the he did he was that we okay. got to be in contact with him right because we i mean or somebody else is going to get him and so you I'm your sure. team can't even focus on the run you have to be on i agree and so now, I don't know how you stop it because it used to be you just stop it and say, okay, you can't visit them. And, you know, and, and before, two, before four, smartphones, it wasn't a big deal. Well, now, you, what do you do? You just text them or you talk to their agent or you talk to whatever. And it's so much easier now to have back oh, yeah. channels than it was before. It was, I mean, it was being done before. I'm not naive, but I'm saying it's so much easier now. And I don't really know what you do to stop it. Um, it's unless I think we're heading towards players having contracts and if they have contracts then i suppose you're be, you could have your employee and then you have union then you have uh, workman's comp i guess you have uh insurance i wonder how many of, of these players and parents are about to be hit here in a few days with taxes on this nil stuff i mean could be you gotta go up, hey look you gotta file should it be. no ain't no should you gotta file it it's supposed to be filed unless you're getting bags of cash, which that could be happening too. I mean, but, I, I'm assuming that's probably still happening. I don't know why it wouldn't. But, you know, there's some. see, there is something wrong with me. And, and again, maybe we have some caveats like, okay, if, you're, if your coach is fired or leaves, you have the opportunity to leave. I wish there were. I mean, I think in a perfect world, you would say, if you're at Auburn or Alabama, you cannot transfer to Auburn or Alabama. I've always thought that. Sure. Or to t if you're in the SEC, you can't transfer in the SEC. But, now, be you, somebody but now, screaming, now you can. Now you can. I know. And there'll be somebody screaming, well, that's not fair to the player. 
And I'm like, this goes back to what I said to begin with. Okay, you're going to get screwed on some aspects. You're getting a big benefit on other aspects. There's give and take. You can't have all of it. Right. And that's what the problem is. For the longest time, the schools and the coaches had all the power. Now it seems like the players have all the power. Neither way is right. So let's mix them together and understand, yeah, if you start out at Texas A&M and you eventually you're, – you're there and you're like, man, I – Auburn was my second choice. I, I, I just wish I had gone there. Sorry, you can't go there unless you sit out a year. If you want to, if you really want to go, I'm that, fine with that. I would totally be behind. Yeah, I mean that, that's the way it used to be. You know, if you transferred, you had to sit a year. And I just think there has to be. And, and again, we saw guys apply for hardships and stuff like that that get denied, and they're like, "Man, you know." And then this guy gets one, and. I don't get one. It was starting to be, my aunt is sick. Right. Okay. I mean, I'm sure you love your aunt, but look, it'd be one thing if you told us your mom, who is a, you know, is dependent on you. Yeah. If she true. were sick, okay, that's one thing. But your aunt that lives in another state happens right. to be sick. I'm really sorry, but you do have to sit out of here. Why don't you go take, sounds like you got to take care of your aunt. Yeah, exactly. You know? Instead of worrying about where you Instead of worrying to. about, tra again, uh, I fully Everybody use think, uses everything for their benefit. I There's fully no admit there will be some situations where somebody will get hosed. But I, right. can't we all agree that we've all taken a hosing? We've all some at some at some point everybody get, there's always a cutoff in a line. You know, if you're at the DMV and the DMV closes at five o'clock right. and they uh, somebody's up there while it turns five o'clock and they're like, sorry, you know, you have to come back tomorrow. You're like, but I sat here for two hours. Tough. I'm sorry. That's life. It is, man. You're going to draw the short straw sometimes. Sometimes you're not. So, hey, up against a break, we come back. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the move, uh, Calipari leaving uh, Kentucky and made it official today. He did talk about it uh, today, made a statement. We'll come back. We'll talk about it. Stay tuned. More to come right after this. Hillaby Towers is an affordable senior citizens community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East. Spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, comfortable living where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more information on Alexander City's best kept secret, 256-329-0552. That's Hillaby Towers in Alexander City. Sign Source is your local vendor for commercial and residential sign manufacturing and installation. We offer all kinds of lighted and non-lighted signage from retail signs, LED message centers, event banners, vehicle wraps, the whole spectrum. We also offer service and repair on existing signs as well as retrofitting to LED or installation of outsourced signage. We have the knowledge necessary to fulfill all of your signage needs in the short or long term. Visit SignSourceNow.com to get started. Satterfield Outdoor Living is Lake Martin's trusted friend for your outdoor land and leisure needs. We're the region's authorized Skag mower dealer for residential and commercial lawns and offer all the small engine accessories you need. With top lines of steel, Echo, Shindaiwa, Husqvarna, and Matabo products that can tame any landscape. Satterfield is also your grill headquarters with Big Green Egg Grill and our pros service everything in-house and back up all sales. Get the Satterfield Outdoor difference on Highway 280 right across from Tallapoosa Ford. You want the best opportunity to be successful in life. You deserve that opportunity. Well, you just happens to be in our motto, central to you, central to your success. Your future is right now. Don't wait. Make your dreams a reality by enrolling at Central Alabama Community College. Register today at CACC.edu. There's a new standard for the marine industry on Lake Martin, being set by Momentum Marine Lake Martin. Momentum Marine is located at the Blue Creek Bridge on Highway 49 South. Stop by soon and meet Les and the staff. While you're here, take a look at our extensive line of boats. Momentum Marine carries Crest, Manitou, Centurion, Monterey, and Riballo boats. Whatever your boating needs or dreams, the pros in Momentum will help you find the perfect boat. Be sure to ask about our brand new rental fleet. Stop by Momentum soon and experience the difference. Let Momentum Marine show you how to experience freedom on the water. Alex City Internal Medicine and Nephrology and Weight Loss Center provides optimum care for the whole person. Dr. Demo Popov specializes in the prevention and diagnosis of high blood pressure, kidney disease, diabetes, and acute and chronic conditions. Our weight loss clinic offers lipo shots and a guide to healthy weight loss. 
Alex City Internal Medicine and Nephrology and Weight Loss Center, where lifestyle changes are made. You know, when you're looking at uh, stats and you're looking at records, it's all and, and coaches, it's about what you've done for me lately. And if you look back to, let's do the 2019-2020 season. Um, <clears throat> Kentucky was 25 and six, 15 and three in the conference. Um, you know, season got canceled at the SEC tournament. No, no postseason. All right. Uh, the next year he was nine and 16. That was the weird year where. You know, people were sitting one person in the section and all that <clears> kind of crap. Nine and 16, eight and nine. Auburn had a losing record that year. I mean, it was just a weird year. Uh, finished eighth in the league. And then 21 22, was 26 and eight. Uh, 14 and four in the league. Finished second. Uh, got beat in the first round. Um, 22 and 12 in uh, 22 23. Finished third in the league. Uh, went out in the round of 32, made it to the second round. And then this past year, 23 and 10. Nah. 13 and 5, he was tied there with all the rest of us at second. Uh, went out and around 64 again. So the last three years have been meh, you know, uh, definitely by Kentucky standards. Now you go all the way back to when he got to Kentucky. He was 35 and 3, 29 and 9, 38 and 2, had a 21 and 12, then a 29 and 11, 38 and 1. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, 32 and 6, 30 and 7. It's about what you've done for me lately. And I mean, and that's that's where Kentucky is. And, you know, he's been there since uh, 2009. And so he's been there for a while. And I think what I saw written by a lot of beat writers and things, it was a good parting of ways for both Kentucky and John Calipari. Calipari gave Kentucky some great years, gave him a national championship. Hard to, hard to, to argue with that. But he's able to now go get a fresh start at 65 years old with another SEC team. And this will probably be his last stop, maybe, depending on how things go. Now Kentucky's back in the market to get a guy that can come in and have a fresh start there. So, I mean, I think it works out for both parties. Yeah, there's a great line in an office episode uh, where I think Dwight Schrute says, I think they both could do better. And I feel uh, like I that's, agree. They, they both could do better. Kentucky and Cal, and I think it is a good reset because, look, it's hard, hard to have a reset where you are. I mean, you go back, I mean, I guess Nick Saban did it to a degree, you know, in terms of offensive philosophy. Everybody very famously before my time talks about Bear Bryant did it, you know, changing from wishbone to – or changing to the wishbone, et cetera. But um, it's tough for most coaches. I mean, and, and it is hard, especially this day and age when you're – and you're Cal – and you're Kentucky, and you're the best program, at, you know, historically in college basketball, and so all eyes are on you all the time. And Cal's got a pretty large ego, as evidenced by it. he was walking his dog in a in a baby <laughs> in carriage. a baby carriage. That's the funniest thing. Yeah, the guy said, "No, I'm, I'm." He said, "No, I'm not. I'm not gonna say anything right now." And it, he said, "The dog's walking me. Yeah. The dog's walking me." So, and that is true. <clears throat> um, but I think this is good for Arkansas. I mean, Arkansas is going to obviously probably get some of the guys that are committed to Kentucky. They will probably end up at Arkansas. They'll get a lot of transfers. And and Arkansas has been doing the transfer market anyway. Right. And so um, I think Arkansas needed a, a big-time refresh. It's good. I think it's better it, for the SEC that Arkansas is uh, more powerful because they are one of the more visible and, and historically – uh, better programs in this conference, so it's probably better that they are good. You know, there are a lot of people who say I, they don't buy that. They just like anybody being good. I like it when the good programs are good. I think it's better for your conference. Yeah, do you think it's odd that Chris Beard, I mean, I think he turned down the Arkansas job. Um, I f now, again, it's sort of like the way Nate Oates said something about, hey, I'm coming, don't worry, I'm coming back to Alabama. Right. I, you know, Kentucky people always say, well, he wasn't really offered. And, well, and, yeah. And, but I think what what just happens is your agents get involved. Yeah, you're probably not technically offered till this time. Sure. But I, I'd be willing to bet Arkansas would have definitely taken Chris Beard before this caliber. Oh, right. I mean, and, and, and the, the rumor is that Chris Beard said he felt like the NIL stuff was maybe better at Ole Miss. And he he would be wrong. But okay, I also yep. think Chris Beard probably looked at it like, hey, people already see me as a villain, 
If I right. come to Ole Miss for one year and leave, after they give right. me a shot, you know, they gave me a shot and I for, leave them high and dry, I really will be a villain. So um, maybe that had something to do with it. I think it's great. Again, I love it for the conference that now, right. okay, Chris Beard, who we all think is a, pro, a pretty good coach, right. he's at Ole Miss, so they can improve. Calipari will definitely improve Arkansas because they'll have a talent. You know what I've right? noticed is the common denominator in everything you just said. Chris Beard and John Calipari and Dan Hurley, all, I heard Knox on all of them this past week. Of course, we hear Knox on Nate Oates and Bruce Pearl. Nate Oates is a jerk. He pushes people. He's got an edge. He blah, blah, blah. Bruce Pearl, the barbecue, the, the background. What coach with any fire or any get go get them doesn't have some kind no, of No, they all do because once you are in that limelight, people are going to examine everything. Right. Everything. So I think it's, you know, again, another waste of breath or waste of typing on social media for fans to jab another team's coach. Well, here's the thing, Brett, and I talked about the villain aspect. Um, Heck, you know, they're all villains. Well, here's, here's what's funny. I'd be willing to bet. I wish we could go. Uh, there, um, some Arkansas fan who I think you've interacted with, I have not, not John Neighbors. No, not another, John Neighbors, yeah. But I've interacted with because when they play our teams. Oh, I blistered but, him. I know you But uh, about, he yep. he – went off on John Calipari this year. Like, is there anybody who underachieves more, who's got right. more? And now and he's his less? coach. And, now he's, and he was like, oh, please. And there was like a thing where it's a prayer emoji. Oh, please let me get John Calipari. Right. It's so funny how we all do that. Like, everybody's right. the worst there ever was until he's yours. Uh, exactly. And we all do it. And I'm telling you right now, if you flipped it, and I'm just going to say it, if, if Nate Oates came to Auburn, I'd be fine with it. Because I know he's a heck of a coach. And you've already said y'all thought you had a chance at Bruce Pearl and would have liked to have had Bruce Pearl if Anthony Grant ain't hung around for another year. So, look, it's that old adage, I hate them when they're over there on your side, but I love them when they're over there on my hey, side. Hey, look, so. I, if, it's, if it means anything, I'm sure y'all loved Mike Shula and I loved Tony Barbie. So, I mean, and, and um, Correct. Whatever that thing was y'all had, I can't even remember. I, we uh, don't say his name. Uh, uh, <laughs> Carson. Yeah. Boy, I couldn't remember it. That's it well, feels to me. If he would have pulled that win off against y'all, would have been the worst loss for Alabama. Oh, I think it'd be the. I mean, be, God Almighty, it'd dude. be up there with. I mean, <laughs> Lyman Monroe always feel like that was like a. But climate. that would have been the worst all in the Iron Bowl. Maybe been the worst loss ever for him to to Nick Saban to lose to Brian Harson in the Iron Bowl, and it almost happened. It dang I sure mean, is. it was so dang close to happening. They had to go to overtime. But I mean, it that to me was just. Jeez, it would have been a problem. I, you just never know, man. And and again, well, how bad how bad that guy was as a coach and a person and all that kind of stuff. But man, you just that's why they play the games. And you do still have to play the games. There, are people who always kill me. Say, well, I can't believe you don't like the look. You still, I still say, play the games a hundred percent. I'm just like I'll, I'll I will say this. I have no problem saying this. And I believe UConn would have beaten Auburn just as badly as they beaten everybody else. A UConn Auburn game would have been better than UConn San Diego State, in my opinion. Or um, sure would Yale, have liked to have seen it. Yale, at the very least, Auburn San Diego State would have been more entertaining than Yale, than Yale That's and right. San Diego I State. I agree. And again, I enjoyed Auburn getting beat as much as anybody. At the same time, I, I understand that when when the, when the fourteen wins. You're sacrificing your entertainment later. What is it's instant mm, gratification right. yeah, versus right. later on gratification. Yeah, right. There's no question about it. Um, and and not, when we say that all the time, everybody likes the underdog winning in the first couple of rounds until they get to the elite eight, and then it ain't no fun no more. But you can't have it both ways. You can't have a George Mason make a run in the final four, and then you go, well, crap. I enjoyed them upsetting whoever it was in the first two rounds. I didn't expect them to make it all the way to the final four. But, you know, that's the way it is, and that's the way it goes sometimes. So uh, we're up against another break. Stay tuned. More to come right after this. Hi, this is Brian Bice with Bice Motors. With our all-star lineup of Dodge trucks, Jeep, SUVs, and Chrysler cars, we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience. Our sales team offers competitive pricing, and we back up all sales with the service department second to none. Bice Motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Visit Bice Motors at 2133 Cherokee Road in Alexander City. Seventy-six percent of nurses say they went into the profession because they wanted to help patients. 
No matter the reason you decided to become a nurse, you have all the tools needed to advance your degree at Jacksonville State University. Our Master's in Nursing program is now offered fully online and can be completed in less than two years. You can customize a flexible course schedule so you can receive your advanced education degree all while working on the front lines. JSU Nursing, your opportunity to advance your career and serve your community. You've dreamed about the perfect house, a place to call your own, and a place to not only stretch out, but to grow. Auto Owners protects your house because to you, it's home. That's simple human sense. Happy to help, man. I was just over there talking to myself anyway. Are you waking up in the morning with a sore jaw, headaches, maybe even ringing in your ears, all because you're grinding and clenching your teeth at night? That's exactly what was going on with me. That's when I found this, the Brox Night Guard. Now the Brox Night Guard redirects the bite force away from the back teeth, reducing jaw pain while still protecting the teeth. This unique design is what makes Brux Night Guard different from all other traditional grind guards. Go to BruxNightGuard.com and order yours today. There's only one option for top of the line aftermarket upgrades on your vehicle, and that's Frontline Outfitters. We offer quality parts, lift kits, custom wheels and tires, bed covers, step bars, and toolboxes. They're installed by trained and skilled professionals to custom powder coating with hundreds of colors and finishes to the highest quality film for window tinting using state-of-the-art film cutting technology. Call Frontline Outfitters at 256-409-8100. Don't be in the back of the line. Put your vehicle at the front with Frontline Outfitters. Hillaby Towers is an affordable senior citizens community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East. Spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, comfortable living where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more information on Alexander City's best kept secret, 256-329-0552. That's Hillaby Towers in Alexander City. Welcome back, everyone. One final segment here in uh, uh, the first hour, and we'll go to the phone lines. Uh, Aaron McKinley, Mortgage Pro Hotline. Go ahead, caller. Hey, good evening, guys. How y'all doing tonight? What's hey, up, Terry. Brent? What's up, Terry? Hey, pretty good, guys. Uh, guys, I think <clears throat> Connecticut would have stomped Auburn. I do. Oh, there's no question. But uh, my point was not that. Well, I'd like to see but, him play. But my point was – I. And, I mean, I, I, the better point would have been to say, I would have rather seen Auburn San Diego State. I think that would have been a pretty – you know, San Diego State's got that muscular – Yeah, that was been, that's good. a good matchup. That would have been a good mm-hmm. matchup. San Diego State sent Yale – Look, to- I had UConn beating Auburn in the, in the Sweet 16. I mean, I'm, I'm, on, I ain't, I'm not stupid. I mean, they're the, they're the favorite. I mean, they obviously played their way out. But, you know, again, if Auburn and Yale play each other a 100 times, I think Auburn wins 99 of them. I really do. I don't think it beat them but one daggum time. And that, but that's all it takes in this tournament. And like Luke and I said, Terry, a, a minute ago, you can laugh if, on the other side when it happens to, you, to the other team. But you make it to this tournament, which you hope year in and year out, it's going to get you eventually. Right. Do people just realize how, how, uh, how rare the best team in the country actually wins the tournament? Yeah, and – Again, that's why I love this one so much more, uh, and that's why I really appreciated the women's tournament, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, and, and and I think it's so much better. I mean, UConn's clearly the best team, and they proved it to everybody, and that, that makes me respect them that much more versus, you know, NC State. Again, no offense, this is the system we have. They just happen to win five straight games and then catch lightning in a bottle in their bracket. Um it, it, they really shouldn't have been in the tournament. They stole a bid from somebody who deserved it, in my opinion. Look, I realize Alabama did play uh, off their feet. By far the best game they've had this year. <clears throat> but honestly, there may be some of the losses. But it just seemed like to me when Connecticut decided they wanted to score, Alabama couldn't stop them. Oh, they said, look, I, you're not insulting me at all. I felt the same way when I was talking to my son about it. Alabama would tie it up, and it felt like Alabama did all, like 100 push-ups to get there. And then UConn... 
did one sit up and the next thing you know they're back up eight that happened twice and i was like it's so tough for us to get right even with them and then it feels like they just pull away in 10 right. seconds we're like what happened they did that last night against when Purdue. When Nelson made the dunk, it just made them mad. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. I, I saw – I'll talk about John Dent's comment here in a minute. Um, I was talking to Brett about that. I've never, I've never seen this before. So, Grant Nelson dunks. In my opinion, he got fouled rather hard. It should have been an obvious foul. He's on the ground. But if you're not going to call the foul, then Connecticut should have had an easy fast break because Mark Sears was even like still captivated by the dunk. He put his hands on his head. You could tell he was sort of frozen. But they blew the whistle, and then the explanation later was, well, we thought he was hurt. And I thought, how can you make that determination that quickly? I mean, players hit the deck all the time. You don't blow the whistle every time. You either thought it was a foul and you didn't call it, or you really screwed Connecticut, one of the two. Now, Brad, I want to ask you a quick football question real quick about Auburn's A-Day Saturday. Okay. Uh, is Cam Coleman going to be the real deal or what? Because that uh, sure sounded like it on the radio. Yeah, he is. Uh, I mean, Cam Coleman's a special player. Look, it doesn't take long to, to see a guy uh, and, and realize, you know, he's got something different than everybody else. And that's what Cam Coleman is. I mean, I think Auburn's got some great receivers coming in. Uh, I think Perry Thompson and Malcolm Simmons and Bryce Kane are all going to be Really good. I thought, you know, a couple of other guys made some plays uh, on Saturday. But Cam Coleman, uh, you take him and you put him in any – on any team, he's going to stand out. And, uh, you know, he, he reminds me a lot of Julio Jones. I hate to make an Alabama reference being an Auburn fan, but he looks he looks like him. Uh, he he, he kinda, seems to be that kind of guy who he, has it, and whatever it is, he's got it. And, you know – you know, when Julio Jones was at Alabama, everybody knew he was going to get the football, and he still made catches and still made plays. That's what's going to happen with Cam Coleman. I mean, he can make adjustments on balls the, that that most most guys can. That's how he scored the touchdown in the A-Day game. I uh, thought the defensive back was in great position. He just made a better play. Sometimes you just are playing against somebody that's better than you, and uh, that that's what Cam Coleman is. Right. Appreciate it. Good job. Good evening. Hey, thank you, Thanks, Terry. Bro. Appreciate it. I mean – and, and, Luke, I know you probably didn't see any of it because you were okay. out, out there. But, I mean, I saw the highlight. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, he's he, he can, he's got, you know, speed to get beyond, you know, downfield behind behind guys, and he can make the catch over the middle, and he, he's just a physical guy. We saw him in, you know, um, you know, in high school for three or four years. And so, um, but there's not um, – there's a reason that you're – I guess that you see a five-star plus now. A Ryan Williams, a Cam Coleman, some of these guys that stand out. They they have things. It doesn't matter how hard anybody else works. It's you can't get to that level. Well, I mean, so. it's, it's a lot like UConn was a five-star plus team. I mean, no matter what any of these other teams have been able to do, they end up winning by double digits. Um, I will say this, you know, and, and to compare, because everybody want Kevin Skarbinski wanted to bring out the comparison deal, which I thought was completely and totally, utterly stupid because – yeah, UConn's a great team, and they're right now they've set records and all that kind of stuff. But that they weren't playing in 2019. Virginia happened to, to win the national championship. Auburn, you know, again, when you go back to the call, to me that game hurt way more than Alabama losing theirs. Not that a loss is a loss, I get it. But, you know, the way that game went down, the way Auburn lost, you lose by a point rather than, you know, losing by 14. And, again, I'm walking out of the arena like you if I'm in your shoes going, man, look, I'm proud of this team. I'm good, whatever. That team right there has been the best team all year in college basketball. We gave them our best shot, so what? Auburn had the game won against Virginia. That's the thing that, that sucks from from our standpoint. When when you can say it was a foul or whatever, you know, if Bryce Brown, I've, been, I've gone back and watched that play 100 times. He bounced the ball off his heel, went back and picked it up. That's not – you can't do that. I mean, if somebody pokes it out, you can go back there and do it. But he dribbled it behind his back, went off his heel, went back, picked it up. You know what, though? If Bryce Brown just doesn't foul him, he, he shoots a half-court shot and the game's over. It was only one second left on the clock when all that transpired. Instead, now you inbound the ball. Wait a minute. Did Bryce, did Bryce Brown foul him? Yeah, Bryce Brown fouled him at half-court. I half thought court. it was a – No. You're talking about – Oh, you're talking about half-court. I'm talking I about the – I got you. When he when – he, Virginia had possession. Oh, I understand All, now. Yeah. Before the well, correct, foul. yeah, okay. before the three point. I mean, they were down, you two, and they're trying to drive up the floor, 
and he, you know, dribbles it off his heel. He goes back there. The clock's still rolling. He don't pick it up to like three seconds. He's not even across. But they weren't court. in the double bo in the bonus. Right, they yeah. weren't. So Auburn, you know, technically by rule, gotcha. You foul him. You know, to try to, and they just happen to make a, a throw into the corner. But in hindsight, if he lets him go and just fires up that half court shot, game's over. And uh, and that's the way it goes. But anyway, anytime you lose a close game, versus again, Alabama had UConn as good as anybody that we've seen in the last maybe two months. And still, they took a seven – there was a sequence in that game where Alabama went on a 7-0 run and UConn went on a 7-0 run. Alabama went on a 7-0 run, UConn went on an 8-0 run. And then it was like, man, it's like you said, my God, can we get this thing over the hump? And you know, that's what like, good teams it's, do, it's man. It's like playing blackjack in a casino, you know, you, when you have your run, you better capitalize by pyramiding. If you don't, if you just play the same amount every time, you're going to go on a run, then the casino's going to go on a run. And the casino's going to end up winning long term. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, Alabama, Alabama's run needed to be more than 7-0. You know, no, UConn's going to have their run. They needed um, a 14-something run. I do think UConn's – I mean, boy, it's hard for me to say – that I've seen a better team in college basketball in a lot. I mean, I don't remember all the all the champions right off the top of my head like I used to because they changed so much. Right. But you know, I think this team is about. This team reminded me of like one of those '90s teams of Duke or something that was, or even a UNLV that's just so dominant. You're like, what, know what in the world it. could you do? I mean, I don't know that. I don't. That's what makes that Kentucky year where they went 38 and, and one. Kentucky would be in that conversation to me. But they lost to Wisconsin. But they lost to us, and I th I feel like if you put Kentucky in this tournament, yeah, I'd want to see that UConn team against this Kentucky team. Right. And if I had to bet, I'd bet on Kentucky. I would too. But like you like you said in this tournament, one other let me let me bring this up. This yeah. is something interesting to me. So UConn fans were out there. I will say this: some UConn fans were trying to talk trash, but nobody really took the bait. I mean, because everybody was like, yeah, okay, we, we think y'all are great. Okay, y'all are also the only ones out here. In jersey, so you're not playing. Take yeah. your jersey off. You don't have a shirt <laughs> under it. You just, you just. I mean, right. like grown men. Right. And um, anyway, uh, but I had this. That's thought, a northeast deal. That is a northeast deal. deal. But I had a thought that, like, okay, when all this alignment does settle, where's UConn going to be? Because I, I sat next to a lady. I think I started to tell the story, and I quit. There's a lady that's a Michigan State fan was sitting next to me, right? right? And we were talking, she goes, I, you know, it's so wild to you in Alabama here. Y'all are football school. And I said, yeah. I said, you know, everybody thinks that, and we are. I said, but we have a pretty good basketball history. I said, it's just so overshadowed by, our, by Kentucky that it, nobody even pays attention to anybody else in the SEC for the most part. But it's not bad. We just hadn't been here before. And she goes, yeah, but, you know, we're at Michigan State. We're a basketball school or something. And, I, no, I said something like, but, you know, football sort of floats the boat everywhere. She goes, well, we're a basketball school. And I said, you are. You're better in basketball, but you're a foot. We're all football school. There's no doubt. I said without football, I said Michigan State's athletic director would punt Tom Izzo in the river if he thought uh, football is leaving if you oh, get rid of yeah. basketball. No I doubt. I said because football brings in all that. She goes, that's not true. And I said, I'm, lady, if nobody's watching college basketball until this. Right. This is when people watch. It's There's the only no time we watch, and the ratings don't lie. That's what it is. In football. People watch all year, but everybody's clawing their eyes out, all these executives, to get these football contracts. That they'll put on anything. Now, you put on basketball yeah. anything for content, but nobody's watching. You know, they just happen to be so many basketball games. And um, that's just the way it is. I said that, you know, think about it. Football coaches make more than basketball Absolutely. coaches. Absolutely. Play in less games, a no, lot no, less no, games. I, yeah. Well, so, you, you did it, and, and you may have said something about this just then, but – the, the study that was done, Kansas's basketball or football program makes more makes, money than their basketball team. Again, and everybody's like, there's no way. There's a way. It's the only way. That's it. And, and that, that's why I'm wondering what's going to happen to UConn. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, what's going to happen to Duke? I mean, if this, this realignment, I mean, it's already been talked about. I mean, if, if the ACC were to dissolve and some of these teams come to the <laughs> SEC and some go to the Big Ten, well, you know, everybody's like, well, Duke, like, what do you mean, Duke? You know, I'm like, no, Duke and football ain't, ain't much. They bring you no they yeah. bring you no brand. Right. They North Carolina's no way more valuable. Well, think about that's why SEC went and got Missouri. It wasn't about, well, yeah, it'd be a lot better if we got Clemson. But 
in terms of competitiveness. Yeah. But Missouri was this whole new footprint. With St. Louis. So, um, we, again, football and, and she, the, she even to the fact that they had an SEC tournament in St. Louis not too long. Ago. That's right. And I said, you know, it's we nobody likes to. I said it's the NFL, then it's college football, then it's everything else. And college basketball's in this everything else. They might even be right there with the NBA. They're, they're probably right there together. They're both ahead of Major League Baseball. Um, but you know, if you don't have football, you don't have any of the other stuff. No. So it it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, she she wouldn't buy my argument. I, I I tried to show her all I could. I did the best I could do. From from I said I know I'm from the south. I'm I'm just telling you the truth. Go look it up. I said I you mean, would, you would much rather have if she saw a spreadsheet of of the athletic department at Michigan State, football is driving the bus. It's it's Period. bringing in all the money and helping with the dispersion of money. When to, you said can I mean Michigan State's got a decent program. Kansas, Kansas sucks in football. I mean, I know they've had flashes in the pan here recently, but they got a decent coach now. Right, but for but, the most but, part they stand. But I mean, Kansas basketball is what Kansas is known for, and for you to say Kansas football really drives that athletic department, not their basketball program, tells you all you need to know in the pecking order of what sports on top. And here's the thing: if uh, and UConn is is able to survive right now, they they drop football for a while, they bring it back. Um, Nobody even and, knows if they have. And they, I mean, you know, they they're okay, but they're not going to bring anything to the table no. when you come to negotiate. And if we end up with two super conferences, will UConn be a part of it? And again, there'll be basketball players say, "Oh, of course it will." They're the most powerful program in the last twenty five years. I agree with you, but what do they bring to the table? No and doubt. here's another thing that's, that's interesting. Again, I, we're, we're way past the break. I'm I'm done with breaks. We're just it's commercials <laughs> at the end for all day, but. <laughs> All right, people love to tell me about um, you know all the upsets. Let, let me let me say this: the ratings. This is why I know that you're you're wrong about that. The ratings for the women's basketball yep. tournament outdrew any NBA game, any college basketball game over the last five years. Have they outdone? Have they done outdone the men's championship? The men's championship only got a fourteen eight, and they got eighteen. Now the men's is on TBS. It's I a little understand. bit of what, a difference. Why? Because of the, whatever, I hate it too, but I guess they That's have CBS. complete and total. I, last year it was on TBS too. I, I was like, I don't like my team being in the Final Four on TBS. Uh, yeah, but anyway. I'm with you. But the, but the women outdid the men. Yeah, year. they outdid the men. They outdid um, every, they did outdid like every. Um, and that game tipped The only off. thing they didn't outdo was the NFL. You know, and, and that game tipped off football. at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and again, I think that on, on a Sunday. Sunday. That's probably helped them a little bit too. But what I'm saying is. If the women's game had featured, I don't know, NC State, who was the who were the other two? Who was the other Final Four? UConn. If it had featured UConn and NC State, that oh. rating would have been cut at least in half. Right. Because you wouldn't have Caitlin Clark, and you who you want to see, and an undefeated team, and an undefeated South Carolina team, who by the way stirred up controversy with Clay Travis right, when right, when Don right. Staley said, "Hey, you know, I think if a man." But um, woman, if you're a woman, you're a woman. You can play whatever. So it stirred up all this controversy. But they were also the two best teams in the country. No, no you're right. I think we agree right. that they you're were right. the two best teams. And Iowa beat them last year to get to the championship. Yeah. And so that, uh, again, well, didn't LSU beat South? Carolina? No, As I, Iowa? I, Iowa played LSU in the championship game last year. I know. I, I thought LSU beat South Carolina in the Final Four. Did they not? No, no, no. I think other way. Yeah, right? LSU has lost ten in a row to South Carolina. Okay. Okay. So it was Iowa. Caitlin Clark knocked them off in the That's even, semifinal. That's that, what led more yeah. to the story. Okay. So. And my point is that this game drew a fourteen point eight. Right. Which is not bad on TBS, by the way. Right. Because it had two number one seeds. If Alabama plays NC State, I have no problem saying the rating wouldn't have been that high. And see, if Yale gets in the Final Four and they play Loyola Chicago, you're going to have trouble finding anybody to watch. Yeah. It. Now, they'll, again, there'll be basketball. I love basketball. Who was in the Final Four last year? San Diego State. San Diego State, FAU. FAU. Uh, of course, UConn and. Who was the other one? San Diego remember. State beat FA, FAU. And remember, right. I hated it so I, I much, know. I was like, I, know. I, know. I, know. I hate I know. having these two right. teams that nobody knows anything about right. in there. And everybody goes, what a story. No, I don't care about the story. Show me. Give me a good game. Yeah, you're right. I mean, um, you, would, you would like I'm, – I'm with you. You know, when you look back at Auburn's Final Four, uh, you had Michigan State, you had Texas Tech, but then you had Virginia and Auburn. I mean, not not terrible, not terrible, but – 
Uh, I'd rather have that one than what we had last that's year. That's what I'm saying. I don't right? remember last, the other one. I can't, I can't either. I can't either. Oh, I do. Miami. Oh, see? Again, that's, that's I mean, four kind of – I mean, UConn and three other eh. – That's it. We really? like – and in and, and this one, at least there was some drama. Purdue was in this game. For, they were only down six at halftime, and you have this. You smelled it, though. Yeah, you, know, you, you see it. Right at the end of the first, I was like, man, if Purdue could actually have maybe a lead, it could be really in. And then it came out, and I think UConn went on a 7 nothing run. I hey, I'll say over, this, man. though, and I just thought about this. The two best dunks of the tournament were on losing we're in, teams. We're on both against UConn. That's right. And the, it, Grant Nelson uh, – was was incredible, and then that guy that last night, good. He, Kyle, he can he caught it. He looked at it, caught it, and then came back. Yeah, it was, on a, it was unbelievable. It was a. <clears throat> I'll, I'll say this, and we got three minutes before we go this break. Um, I, I've never seen this before. Purdue only scored sixty points. Zach Eady had thirty-seven. Braden Smith had twelve. Man, that was basically it for them. I mean, you and, and a great three-point shooting team only shot seven threes, only shot – only they made ran one. them off the line. Right. I, I mean, I've never seen – you're not going to beat anybody in this modern era of college. But I don't care if you got Zach Eady or not. He's – obviously, you didn't stop him. He scored 37 points, had 10 rebounds. You're not going to beat anybody in this era of college basketball shooting the ball from outside only seven times. Mm -mm. Now, if you made all seven – that that'd be but one of seven isn't gonna beat anybody on any night. I mean you only scored sixty points in the game. If you look at uh UConn, they were six of twenty two or something like that. But they made six. And if you look do the math, take the one three away from Purdue and, and give them the, and, and the the five, that's the difference in the game. Fifteen points. So I mean it's just a to me it's it's it, it was a weird game. It was apparent that they wanted to use Edie. They got everything they could get out of Zach Edie. He scored 37 points, man. And, and I, I thought it, <clears throat> I did think it was funny. I, I, again, this is not I – I don't want this to be mistaken for complaining about the officials in the Alabama game. But I did have the thought leaving. I was like, I wonder who's going to get the benefit of the doubt. UConn, who they allow to play incredibly physically. Right. Now, every – in that way, everybody can play physically, but it obviously benefits UConn because they are they're used to playing more physically. So I said I have no problem saying this: if UConn plays with SEC refs, they have dudes foul out. SEC refs now I know the SEC doesn't have their own refs. No, I know I know that, but I'm saying it seems like the same people no, referee a lot of the correct, SEC games. Correct, correct. But they have seem to have a much quicker whistle, and in the in the Final Four game. And in the championship game, I thought they allowed UConn to play pretty physical. Now, what made it interesting was I also think they don't call anything on Zach Eady ever for any reason. Now, m maybe he doesn't commit fouls. It sure looks like he does to me. Maybe he's not in three seconds. Maybe I can't count. Sure looks like he's in the lane for three seconds to me a right. lot of times. Is that even an existent thing anymore? I watched last night, and there were a couple times. Technically, you're, you're in the lane if you have one foot in the lane. And there was one time he stood down there, I counted six or seven seconds. You know, what, he, he didn't have the ball. You know, ball was moving around, and he had that one foot. It mo I guess he looked so dang big, and he's outside the lane. He's got one foot right. in there. The referee's like, well, that don't really count. But it does count. And he, and it he, does count. I understand he's hard to officiate, but so many people have noticed this that I wonder why hadn't somebody gone to the official and said, look, guys, Y'all got to look for three seconds. I know nobody calls anymore. We hardly ever see it. But he can't just sit down there. But this man's in there for the whole time. And, and no doubt. No doubt. I, I counted the one time. The paint color is different <laughs> under his shoes because He's it's faded it all his, around. It's worn out. No doubt about it. <laughs> I, I I made a point because of all the banter back and forth on Zach Eady. And I, there were, I know for that one time it was six or seven seconds. He didn't move. He just got on that. He got on the left side of the block, and he was kind of looking toward the camera. And I'm like, all right, he's in the lane. There's three. There's four. There's. Five. I'm like, my God, this is right. And, and, again, I also understand we don't want his fans to see three seconds called like eight times a game. No. We'll understand no, that. No. But if you call it just once or twice, I think he'll get the message. Right. He'll, he'll, he'll police himself at yeah. that point. So. I, I'll tell you something else that was weird. I've never seen this before. Purdue got two – Backcourt calls against NC State, 
by the same guy not realizing where he was I, on the court. That, like within two minutes of each other. Hard, you know? hard to do, man. I know it's crazy. All right, up against the break. Stay tuned. More to come right after this. GlennSmith.com, the great shopping experience. You'll get at our dealership online. GlennSmith.com, brand new Chevrolets, brand new GMCs. GlennSmith.com, compare pre-owned models side by side. GlennSmith.com, get your best price every day and see everything we offer at your convenience 24-7. Glenn Smith Chevrolet GMC in Opelika, Alabama. Get ready to smile at GlennSmith.com. Whether it's Lake Martin, Lay Lake, or Logan Martin, boaters from all over the state of Alabama come to Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama, because it's worth the drive. With the best deals on unbeatable Suzuki outboards, Manitou and Landau Tritunes, and a great pre-owned inventory while they last, Alex City Marine is the pros the locals know. And no matter where you're from, when you're here, you're local to us. Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama. AlexCityMarine.com. They say we live in an age of big data, where computers and fancy algorithms are supposed to know you best. But at Country Financial, we know helping you own your future requires, well, something much bigger. Contact your local Country Financial representative and start planning for your future with a personal touch. You don't have to ask who, what, or why. Who's Diner is the go-to place for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Conveniently located at the corner of Highway 22 and 280 in Alex City, Who's Diner offers the best meals and the best deals in town. Try our fresh made-from-scratch pancakes, chicken salad, Philly cheesesteak, or the Who Burger. It doesn't get any better than who? Who's Diner, of course, on the corner of Highway 22 and 280. Who's Hungry? Care offers a wide array of services that allows them to treat many conditions, and they also offer primary care. In addition to these services, they also offer DOT physical exams, lab testing, sports physicals, and vaccines. They accept most major insurance plans, including Medicaid. Main Street Family Care opens seven days a week. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Heal better, feel better fast. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the roads of Alabama calling. Tony Sarah Ford has your answer. Serving you for over 40 years with one of the largest Ford and pre-owned inventories in the state and the Sarah Promise. Our best deal when you buy or trade, a 72-hour exchange policy, a no-hassle trade-in promise. Written offers are good for seven days. And our best service promise. Our factory certified technicians help keep your vehicle running smoothly. That's why Alabama can be yours to discover in a new vehicle from Tony Sarah Ford in Sylacauga. Welcome back, everyone, to Sports Blitz Live here on this Tuesday evening. I've uh, got about 45 minutes left in the show. Call us, 256-234-6221 to be part of the program. Um, kind of talking about some, um, uh, you know, some, some Auburn A-Day information here from some comments coming in. Jim said Thorne's not the answer. No, I don't think. I think, and then he later comes on down to, to answer John's comment. He said he's a Band-Aid while he finds a quarterback that can run the RPO game. I think, uh, you know, Peyton Thorne had 133 yards passing, 9 of 14. Uh, it was it was about what you expected. Um, I don't think Holden Gurner is, a, is an option at all. Hank Brown was okay, and then Walker White's just not ready yet. So, I mean, I really think – it's Peyton Thorne unless you go out and get somebody out of the portal. And uh, I'm not sure that Auburn doesn't, but um, uh, I think Jim Jim is right. I think it's just buying time <clears throat> until, you know, you get the right guy in there. So I don't, I don't know what that looks like. But, again, he's got better targets around him this year. He's got a better offensive line. Uh, the running back room looks pretty good uh, for Auburn. So Auburn's got some weapons. 
Peyton Thorne doesn't have to be a massive world beater. He just doesn't need to do things to get you beat. He needs to get be able to make some simple throws. Last year, he, to me, he struggled more on some simple routes than he did on more some uh, some of the downfield stuff that's complex. So, all right, um, but but for the most part, uh, a good weather day. The clock kind of ran the whole time. Uh, you didn't really have special teams other than field goals. There weren't any punts or anything going on. So when you got four downs, when you ran out, you just turned the ball back over and went to the 30-yard line. Um, you know, running the football looked pretty good at times. I think uh, Hugh Free said, I'd like to be a 60-40 run team. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to see how that plays out with the weapons they have. Uh, receiver, I thought defensively, uh, Jaron Thompson, the transfer from Texas, looked really good. He got the defensive MVP. Uh, he looks the part. Uh, was a pretty good player at Texas. So uh, he'll help with Keontae Scott coming back. Uh, linebackers, uh, you know, I thought played pretty doggone good. And then Malik Blockton, I think, ended up with three tackles from the defensive line, the freshman coming in from Pike Road. So some bright spots out there. Um, Again, it's hard to tell a lot in, a, in an A-Day game. Uh, you just more for fans and uh, just a wrap-up for uh, for spring football. Alabama will be up this Saturday, Luke. Yeah, and I mean, look, we, it's so funny. We're going to talk about this all week on Locked on Bama, and there'll be all kind of shows talking about what are we going to see. We're not, you're going to be like the Auburn game. You ain't going to see a lot. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> these A-Days – are always a disappointment. They are, really are. And look, I hope for a good atmosphere. I think Alabama's got gold. They'll have some good. Now I think Auburn crowd. had a good uh, chance last year. They were, wasn't it the Tiger Invitational for softball. You had Tennessee in town. Yeah, right. You know, right. you had some. You had some things, and that's. I do love that they circle a day around these other things. Sure. Alabama's got A and M coming in for um, softball. They've got baseball with a number one team in the country in Arkansas coming in. So um, that that can be fun. You can. Do multiple events. Also, shout out to Reed, his first Stallions home game, I think, this weekend. So I might go to that. I heard, I heard Reed talking about Reed and the Stallions. I heard Reed was kind of showing out this weekend in Birmingham at a bar, at a watch party. He's oh. like, I don't know, man. He, I heard he was putting on shoulder pads and doing some. I think Reed's like the Stallion super fan. Okay, I'm down with I mean, it. I, mean, I hope it works. Again, I want this to be successful. So far, I've gone to probably four or five games, but I'm going as completely casual fan. I mean, I, I'm not wearing my – So you have been to a few games. Oh, I've been to a lot of – and because I can take my daughter, it's not super right. crowded. No. Um, I've taken my daughter and her friends, and it's, it's fun. I would highly recommend going. It's easy to get in and out of. It's sure. probably going to be easier to get in out of than it will be to go to Alabama's A-Day. And I'm really – once I found out Birmingham's got a home game, I'm like – should I go day? Because my daughter wants to go to A day. Right. And I'm like, should I go to A day and deal with all that traffic? You know, I've been yeah. traveling out as per usual. And should I do that or should I stay in Birmingham? And so we'll see. But um, you know, I'm not sure what we're gonna learn or see. I mean, I, th I think people will nitpick Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson to death. There was a scrimmage uh, this past weekend where Ty Simpson looked really good, apparently. But as Jimmy Stein always says, hey. Look, also consider he's running the twos, so he's going against the twos. You know, that's right. different. I mean, yeah, Ty Simpson's probably closer to a starter than a lot of those twos are. So it's, it, he's going to look better. He's not playing the, the, the best of the team. So um, that's, that's going to be interesting to see how people handle that. A lot of people want to see Justice Haynes um, and, and maybe some of these new younger defensive backs. So that's going to be fun. I really wish Ryan Williams were there. He obviously will not be. Uh, participating in this but um yeah i mean i'm going to go with all these expectations and learn practically nothing yeah, I, I, I know this. but the one thing, thing the one yep. thing that i don't think we talked about this next last tuesday because it maybe it came did it come out after i don't remember exactly when it came out but the sec has already announced okay what we're going to do for the schedule not of course in 24 is already set but what we're going to do in 25 for the sec schedule is just flip-flop what you did that, in 24. correct i hate this idea I think this is stupid. I'm fine with playing eight games still. Right. But mix it up. I mean. Yeah. I guess do they want to make it where it's a home and home deal? But you return the the favor. I mean, I don't, I don't but, know. Okay. Is that what you're going to do every two years? You're going to get a fresh group of teams, and then you're going to do a home and home, and then every two years it's going to rotate. I, I mean, I think what they've said is this really has no effect on when they ultimately – they're trying to negotiate for that ninth game. Right. You know, 
uh, but they want to negotiate it with Disney and ESPN and everybody saying, look, you, you, you're paying us for eight. Y'all want a ninth. We ain't giving you a ninth unless you right. pay us for a ninth, right. which I totally get. Um, but I hate this idea because I was like, hey, what that means is that's one more year. Now Alabama did just play Texas home and home, so fine. But that's one less year that, that you have to put off Auburn, Texas. You know, I'm that, with you. wouldn't I'm that with be you. fun? Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I agree. You, that's one more year you put off, for the love of God, Alabama, Mississippi State, who have played forever, or Auburn, Ole Miss. It sure does look weird to look down on Auburn's schedule and not see Ole Miss, Mississippi State, or LSU. Yeah. It is weird. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Now, look, Auburn's schedule, I mean, this year you got to go on the road to Georgia and Alabama. I get it. But in 25, if Auburn continues to recruit, continues to build their program, you know, they'll have all they'll have Alabama and Georgia at home, but the schedule is really, really favorable. Oh, it's with very their manageable. It's it's pretty manageable next year because their non conference, you know, is is Cal this year who's not very good. Baylor and, next year. And then Baylor who's who's really fallen off a cliff too. They almost fired their coach. So I mean they they've got a lot of, of opportunity in front of them. They That's do. why I'm not I don't think it's yeah, you always want to do the best you can do, but I don't think it's like super imperative that they get a new quarterback in there this year. I think Peyton Thorne can maneuver this schedule as, to meet expectations. I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, but the next year, it'll be different now. You know, Auburn will have to go to Oklahoma, I guess. Yeah, yeah but that, I don't – that's not a world-beating place. I mean, No, really. it's, well, it's, it's a tough place to play. It's not as tough as it was <laughs> right. eight years ago. Correct. Um, and in fact, Texas is definitely better. You don't have to play Ole Miss, who's obviously uh, – you know, a lot of people have them. I've seen some people already say, hey, they'll be one of the four teams left when all said and done. So We'll see. Um, they always you know, find a way. Again, it's hard for me to buy into it. Like you said, it's hard yeah, for me I to can't buy into buy it. Into but them, um, I see it. Uh, anyway, I, I just think that's so lazy of the SEC. Just, I would have rather them said, hey, let's just mix up the whole thing. Yeah, okay, right. we'll keep the Iron Bowl. Yeah, okay, we'll keep Florida, Georgia. But we're going to mix up a lot of other stuff. I mean, it, and make it kind of fresh. I'm with you. Um, I, I, totally I just thought it was a really a bad move, and it's almost like a – I thought it was sort of a parody, like, okay, if ESPN won't do – we're just going to do this. You know, well, it, in that, in that they could have jazzed it up a lot more. Yeah, they. I think they missed the boat. Too. We're missing Ole Miss, Texas. Now, again, they had a home and home not too terribly long ago. But, but I mean, still, there's so many more matchups that you yeah, can Yeah, you're missing there. A&M, Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, again, as you mentioned, Auburn, LSU. I mean uh, – that uh, one is weird. That, Auburn, that Tennessee weird. even. I mean, even some so, of the old school rivalries you don't get to do because you're doing it this dumb way. Like, we got to see Alabama Vandy, Auburn Vandy for two years in a row. It's great because we get this four straight wins, we understand. <laughs> right. But it stinks because I, I just think that stinks. I do too. I agree with you. All right, uh, we're going to go to break. Stay tuned. More to come right after this. Hi, this is Brian Vice with Vice Motors. With our all-star lineup of Dodge trucks, Jeep, SUVs, and Chrysler cars, we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience. Our sales team offers competitive pricing, and we back up all sales with the service department second to none. Vice Motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Visit Vice Motors at 2133 Cherokee Road in Alexander City. Planning season is here, and the Potting Shed Garden Center is happy to give you professional landscaping advice when it comes to planting your shrubs and trees. Auburn's best kept secret will have it all this fall. Mums, pansies, pumpkins, and much more. All an array of colors and sizes along with beautiful pots and containers, indoor plants, and a great selection of other gardening gifts. It's all at the Potting Shed Garden Shop, where natural elements reign supreme. Located on the corner of Moore's Mill and Society Hill Road in Auburn. Heritage South Credit Union in Alexander City is your community credit union, and they have been for over 80 years. Heritage South Credit Union proudly serves Tallapoosa, Coosa, Lee, Chambers, Randolph, and Chilton Counties. From checking to business accounts, to share savings, to club accounts, to their kids club and investments, visit them online at myhscu.com. Heritage South Credit Union, your community credit union for 80 years. Federally insured by NCUA. Hi, this is Andrew McGreer at Dunning Roofing. 
At Dunning Roofing, we specialize in high-quality premium roofs. We don't build roofs that just meet code requirements. We build quality roofs with premium materials that significantly exceed our competitors' warranties. We put money on your roof, not in our pockets. If you're looking for a top-quality roof, call Dunning Roofing today for your free quote at 256-307-7601 or visit us at dunningroofingal.com for more information. Lake Martin Funeral Home and Cremation is coming soon to the corner of 280 and 49 North in Daytonville. This new 10,000 square foot facility is conveniently located to serve the residents of the Lake Martin area and its many communities. A branch of Frederick Dean Funeral Home and Crematory in Opelika, Lake Martin Funeral Home and Cremation looks forward to serving your families and your communities, as we have since 1900 at Frederick Dean. 256-750-0381. GlennSmith.com, the great shopping experience you'll get at our dealership online. GlennSmith.com, brand new Chevrolets, brand new GMCs. GlennSmith.com, compare pre-owned models side by side. GlennSmith.com, get your best price every day and see everything we offer at your convenience 24-7. GlennSmith Chevrolet GMC in Opelika, Alabama. Get ready to smile at GlennSmith.com. If you're tired of the same old, same old, and you're hungry for something really good, then it's time to go to JR's Sports Bar and Grill. JR's has the best fingers and wings around, and their menu is loaded with appetizers, burgers, salads, and so much more. Follow JR's on their Facebook to keep up with their live music events and drink specials. And if after a long day you just want to stay in, remember JR's delivers. Call in your order at 256-329-2328. JR Sports Bar and Grill, 145 Alabama Street in Alexander City. Inspired by the bold bison, Southern Union students blaze new trails every single day. They press forward knowing their SU education will lead them to success. Affordable, accessible, and locally unparalleled. Whether you're transitioning to a university or launching straight into a lucrative career, a degree from SUSEC can help you blaze your path. Three locations, dedicated faculty and staff, endless possibilities. It's all waiting for you at Southern Union. It's time to venture forward. Register today. Lee Apparel is your go-to vendor for screen printed and embroidered apparel and promotional products. We print and embroider free custom made graphics or outsource designs on everything from t-shirts, headwear, corporate wear, team sports wear, high-end safety apparel and promotional products. At Lee Apparel you can always expect quick turnaround time, competitive pricing, friendly customer service and free in-hands delivery on all orders. Visit us at leeapparel.com to get started. They say we live in an age of big data, where computers and fancy algorithms are supposed to know you best. But at Country Financial, we know helping you own your future requires, well, something much bigger. Contact your local Country Financial representative and start planning for your future with a personal touch. When you need an automotive hero, you got to call S&S Discount Tire Pros. With locations in Alexander City and Davil, we are here to serve you today. From quick services like oil changes and tire rotations to in-depth automotive repairs such as suspensions, brakes, and tune-ups, S&S can take care of all your tire needs. You just have to focus on what's important and love the drive. Call S&S Discount Tire Pros today. We are automotive heroes, and we are here to serve you. GlennSmith.com, the great shopping experience you'll get at our dealership online. GlennSmith.com, brand new Chevrolets, brand new GMCs. GlennSmith.com, compare pre-owned models side by side. GlennSmith.com, get your best price every day and see everything we offer at your convenience 24-7. GlennSmith Chevrolet GMC in Opelika, Alabama. Get ready to smile at GlennSmith.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Sports Blitz Live. A couple segments left in tonight's show. You can still call us, 
256-234-6221 to be part of the program and get your comments in uh, as well. Um, Luke, I was just telling you, uh, kind of a live update, Alabama losing to South Alabama right now, 5-4. to four. They still got a chance, though. Uh, Auburn uh, lost to Alabama State 3-2 to tonight. And That's bad. Alabama's got four wins in conference play. Uh, they're 4-8, and eight, and Auburn is 2-10. and ten. Uh, I mean, it is. It's, and Alabama welcomes in the number one team in the country, and Auburn's going to welcome. Or, in the do they best, travel to Kentucky? No, they come to here, but yeah, it don't and, matter. And Kentucky's really, they just swept Alabama. They're really good. They're, they're leading the East. They're, yeah, they're 11-1 along with Arkansas. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. It's it's why. Look, I, I've said this on, on the show. Me and Randy have talked about it ad nauseum. Uh, other people, too. And I'm not making excuses for our programs because Auburn, I mean, Butch Thompson's had Auburn in the College World Series two times in the last four years. But, man, L, you mean LSU's three and nine right now. Ole Miss is three and nine. Um, but in this state, Auburn and Alabama are at a disadvantage when it comes to baseball because of the scholarships and the NIL. And Jason Caldwell was on the show last Friday. He said NIL didn't help Alabama and Auburn. It didn't give Auburn and Alabama a boost because everybody else got NIL. So all these other schools are giving full rides, and they're giving NIL. Now they're putting money in their pocket. Auburn and Alabama's having to use NIL to supplement the scholarship to get them to where they don't have to pay anything. And, no, and again, it goes back to popularity of the sport. Nate Oates, from my understanding, his NIL budget has now gone way up right. after, after this run. I think people understand, and that was probably part of his contract. Like, yeah, we're going to give you more to work with. Just like Calipari allegedly is going to get five, six million dollars in NIL per annually to work with. Um, right. But if you're Alabama or Auburn, every dollar you put in NIL towards baseball is less you're putting towards football. Well, there's no doubt about it. And now basketball, both of them are going to do their thing, and both of them understand. Okay, we can be at least a little profitable at, or break even with basketball. And it helps a lot because it's very visible. But baseball, I don't – nobody's – yeah, we all want to win the World Series. We all do. Nobody's really worried about it. I mean, if if y'all don't make it this year and we don't make it this year, it's sort of like – Okay. You know, okay. Who's, yeah. Who really is worried about it? Now, LSU can worry about it, but they also have a lottery. LSU should be worried. They should be better than what they They are. should be way better than three and nine. I mean, Auburn's got two wins. They've got three wins. Alabama's got four wins. Look, and again, I'm not giving Auburn and Alabama a pass. But like Jason Caldwell said, Auburn and Alabama have good players, but they almost have to play perfect. There's, they don't have the depth. They don't have the quality. This just, this just is what it is. Now, both teams may have one or two guys that are pretty doggone good. But if they don't have good pitchers, it doesn't matter. It don't matter. I mean, up until – I mean, Auburn's – Bats, I mean, it didn't show tonight. Only scored two runs, which was a joke. But for the most part, Auburn's been scoring seven to nine that, runs a game. It is very odd that they only score two runs. I mean, look, I get it. You only score two against Tennessee or whatever this past weekend. But, my God, it's Alabama State. And, again, no shot at Alabama yeah. State, but they shouldn't be on the same No, they shouldn't be. No, they shouldn't. Now, again, <clears throat> I would say it's because a lot of times when you play in a midweek game and Alabama's playing Troy and Auburn's playing Sanford or whatever – Sanford and Troy may throw a, a good a sure. rip, one of their better pitchers, and Auburn Alabama may not. Well, Auburn right now ain't got any good pitching, so they don't make a rip <laughs> who they throw out there. So right now, it, it's not that they're saving anybody. I just think, but heck, they only held out they held Alabama State three runs. I mean, it's like the pitching actually came through tonight, and the bats went cold. Well, I was going to say it's. <clears throat> I mean. You could also say Alabama State exploded for three runs, probably. Yeah. I mean, look, Alabama State scoring three is probably the equivalent of Tennessee scoring eight. That's Again, that's not probably, a, a, probably. a shot at Alabama State. They, they just not shouldn't in the, be in the same you're category. You're right. You're absolutely right. So, um, I mean, but boy, this brutal. at this point, you're beginning to get to now. No, the backside of Auburn's SEC schedule. But it don't matter. So, I think the damage has been done. I mean, that, you're two and Not 10. only that. And then you think about, okay, well, at least they were like, okay, well, at least we got Missouri later on. You know, but they just, Missouri just swept Florida. Oh. Unbelievably. I, I know. I mean, and Missouri was the last place team. Yeah. You know, so if Alabama, who do they play this weekend? Uh, Arkansas. Okay, so if Alabama, let's just say, wins one game. If Auburn, and this is how crazy this league is. Auburn lost two one-run games to, to Arkansas. They lost a five-to-four game and a one-nothing game. They won an eight-to-six game. All right, 
that's how crazy this – Auburn's lost five one-run games. So, if you look at it, they're two and ten. But five of those losses were by one. All right, if Alabama were to win one and Auburn would win one this weekend, Auburn beat Kentucky once, Alabama beat Arkansas once, Alabama will have five wins, Auburn will have three. Both have almost got to be perfect coming down the stretch to have a shot at postseason at that point. And that's with Auburn having, and I don't have Alabama's schedule in front of me, but Auburn with Mississippi State, LSU, Ole Miss, Missouri, and then Auburn and Alabama play at the end of the year. Well, everybody else has either a 500 record or a losing record. So, yeah, it's definitely better than what we've had to face up to this point. But you've lost so much that it really doesn't matter at this point. You, what, what is their record right now overall? Who? You know, Auburn. I don't know what the overall record, but they're two and ten in SEC play. I think they're like nineteen and twelve overall. Yeah, that, you, they only lost one game two, before tonight. In two the, games in the non-con. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's probably right. Nineteen and twelve. That's, so there's a lot of games to go. <laughs> I mean, she, we're not even halfway through this mother. No, that's well, a, you got thirty games in SEC play. But I, know, I mean, it's insane. You know, and Auburn went twelve and three in their last fifteen last year. Could they do that again this year? They could, but. It doesn't feel that way. Even Butch Thompson said that the other night. It doesn't feel like this team has – but maybe they turned the corner. I mean, again, it's what the doctor ordered. I mean, who would have ever thought you would be looking forward to going to Mississippi State, to LSU, and Ole Miss coming to your place? I mean, LSU, probably the best program overall in the league. Uh, historically. You know, historically, and Ole Miss, Mississippi State just won national championships the last few years. And Mississippi State's kind of turned it around. I mean, they, people thought they were going to be in the they're six and six. They're, yeah, and now in the conference, I mean, this right. grinder. But I mean, they've they've done better this year. Um, Ole Miss apparently is not doing much better. But uh, you know, the other side, the other way to look at that is, yeah, Auburn's going to come with a golden yeah. opportunity. But you'd have to think LSU is going to be pretty desperate at that point. I mean, they, they, they've no, got to start winning, too. Well, exactly. And, and I mean, it's just, it's just what it is. Jim said Auburn's 18 and 13 now after that loss okay. to, our, to, to Alabama State. That's so right. that was right. It was eight, they were 18 and 12 going into tonight. And, and so, yeah, so preseason. But everybody had a great preseason. Jim, what's, what's Bama's overall record? I'm curious. And I had that pulled up. But, well, uh, you know, it's funny because when Alabama went to Kentucky this weekend, um, Alabama was 13, Kentucky 17. I right. hadn't seen the new rankings, but I assume Kentucky's – in the top, 12. Kentucky's 11 and 1, 27 and 4 overall. That's Alab insane. Alabama is 22 and 10, 4 and 8. Auburn is now, like Jim said, 18 and 13, 2 and 10 in league play. I, I just. This is a. Boy, I said it last week about Tennessee. How about this? Texas A&M's 28 and 4. They're 8 and 4 in conference play. Wow. <laughs> I mean, they were undefeated going into conference play. Uh, Mississippi State's 21 and 12. LSU's 21 and 12. Uh, Alabama's 22 and 10, Ole Miss 18 and 15, Auburn 18 and 13, uh, but Arkansas and A and M have kind of separated, and Kentucky have separated. So, and nobody saw Kentucky doing this. Not Kentucky was picked like fifth or sixth. Yeah, in the they, league. I mean, uh, they're 27 and four, 11 and one now. Again, it's baseball, man. You can go turn on, on a you, dime. You, you, you can go on a losing streak. Well, again, you know, Florida just got swept by Missouri. I think this past weekend, and now they. Uh, are getting hammered by Florida State tonight. Get killed, 19 yeah. to 4 or something. Tennessee, 7 and 5. Vanderbilt's 8 and 4. Kentucky's 11 and 1. South Carolina and Florida, both 6 and 6. Georgia's 5 and 7. Missouri, 4 and 8. So Missouri's 15 and 18 overall. They're the only team in the conference that has a losing but the, record. And I go back to, like, that's why I think uh, watching the Alabama game now on, on, on my phone and yep. mid Auburn losing that Alabama State, that's what's so pivotal. If, okay. You can kind of stink in the SEC and be like, yeah. Well, but you got to win these midseason. You, you better games. win the. And Auburn, that's the first midweek game they've lost all year to Alabama State, and it was at home. There's no excuse. I mean, you know, you just got deflated. You come and look. I mean, it may have had something. Sunday, Auburn got their doors blown off by Tennessee, and obviously they they did not come ready to play tonight. So uh, some teams mail it in. Some use it as motivation. Right now, it's not not a good deal. What's the update on the? Alabama's Alabama? got a man on third. Um, I can't I, – boy, I can't even look at my phone. Um, it looks like one out, bottom of the eighth. There you go. So, down a run. Down a run. Okay. All right, uh, up against another break. Stay tuned. More to come right after this. OGS Tournaments presents Crank for Bank. Win over $1.6 million in cash and prizes. Over 200 tag bass and 75 tag crappie are waiting to be caught by you in Lake Martin. Register now online at crankforbank.com for only $120. All ages are welcome. Fish from the dock, 
boat, or the shores of Lake Martin to win over $1.6 million in cash and prizes. It's Crank for Bank. There's a new standard for the marine industry on Lake Martin, being set by Momentum Marine Lake Martin. Momentum Marine is located at the Blue Creek Bridge on Highway 49 South. Stop by soon and meet less than the staff. While you're here, take a look at our extensive line of boats. Momentum Marine carries Crest, Manitou, Centurion, Monterey, and Rabalo boats. Whatever your boating needs or dreams, the pros in Momentum will help you find the perfect boat. Be sure to ask about our brand new rental fleet. Stop by Momentum soon and experience the difference. Let Momentum Marine show you how to experience freedom on the water. At CNT Electric, our clients are our priority. For the safety and security of your family and home, our technicians are professionally trained, drug tested, background checked, and wear uniforms with name tags. We're proud to have served the Elk City, Dadeville, and Lake Martin areas for the past 10 years. Give us a call at 256-234-0007 for all your electrical service and repair needs. Or visit us on the web at www.cntelectricllc.com and spell out the word AND. The food at Oscar's Cafe makes your mouth water. At Oscar's, enjoy great-tasting catfish, or maybe you're just in the mood for one of Oscar's fresh salads. Even kids know the place for a fine meal is Oscar's with a great kids' menu. Oscar's also has great-tasting burgers full of backyard flavor. So come on out to Oscar's Cafe for great food and homegrown hospitality. We're located on Highway 49 South in Dayville, just before the Blue Creek Bridge. And remember, it's all fun and games till there's only one cheese ball left. Inspired by the bold bison, Southern Union students blaze new trails every single day. They press forward knowing their SU education will lead them to success. Affordable, accessible, and locally unparalleled. Whether you're transitioning to a university or launching straight into a lucrative career, a degree from SUSEC can help you blaze your path. Three locations, dedicated faculty and staff, endless possibilities. It's all waiting for you at Southern Union. It's time to venture forward. Register today. OGS Tournaments presents Crank for Bank. Win over $1.6 million in cash and prizes. Over 200 tag bass and 75 tag crappie are waiting to be caught by you in Lake Martin. Register now online at crankforbank.com for only $120. All ages are welcome. Fish from the dock, boat, or the shores of Lake Martin to win over $1.6 million in cash and prizes. It's Crank for Bank. Welcome back here with one final segment here on Sports Blitz Live. We appreciate everybody joining us here uh, tonight. Uh, just some some interesting news, and I think this was kicked around. But Randy and I talked about this on the Auburn Blitz today, uh, Luke. I think Dan Hurley pretty much said his wife does not want to leave where she is, and it's close to where you know home, I guess, and and all this, and that she would divorce him if, if he went to Kentucky. And he's like, I can't afford to get divorced. Now I'm finally making some money and all that. But Kentucky intends, according to some sources here, uh, intends to offer Dan Hurley a deal that he can't refuse, according to uh, people clo close to A.D. Mitch Barnhart. The deal would reportedly make Dan Hurley the highest paid coach in college basketball history. You know, from a – I guess Kentucky has to do that. They have they to, have to they go have after to, to save faith. I mean, it really is sort of the same you thing. You have to make him tell Arkansas you know. had to do. I mean, Arkansas, you know, thought they had a couple of guys. A couple of guys turned them down. Next thing you know, they're like, um, we're at the bottom of the barrel. Now, the only way we can get out of this barrel is if we make a huge splash. And so they go get Calipari. Right. And so it happens. Did you read where Calipari went back to Kentucky and asked him to offer? I'm just reading this on Twitter. This uh, Kentucky broadcaster, Dick Gabriel, says John Calipari asked Kentucky to counter Arkansas's offer. Which I was they like, did. that's crazy because I think – Calipari was actually making more at Kentucky, but maybe he's talking about with the NIL and whatever. Probably. He said Calipari holds a lifetime contract, at, or did, with Kentucky and his second highest paid coach in college basketball. Calipari, as I am told, this is what he said uh, in a quote. Calipari, as I'm told, said, here's what it's going to take to keep me. And Kentucky said, I don't think so. So, well, you know, when you when you come off of a, 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 a two – one and duns and then one round of 32 in the last three years, you don't really have much leverage to say, hey, this is what you're going to do to keep me. I mean, 
if you just won two national championships or played in two Final Fours or whatever, I can see that. But when you come to when you come to negotiate to the negotiating table, when you've been ousted in the first round twice and then a, a, the other other only other one you got beat in the second round, you don't have much leverage. You know, um, it, it. I don't think you do. Either. And you you. You already had all the lip. You had everything. You had a $33 million buyout. You had all this stuff. And make it clear, Kentucky was not firing him. Yeah. He was coming back. In fact, you know, there was rumors that he breached his contract anyway because he was supposed to let Kentucky know that he's uh, negotiating with somebody. But I, I don't know. Um, I, in the end, if Dan Hurley come look, if Dan Hurley, who I, I consider 100% without a doubt to be the best coach in college basketball right now, Okay, if he were to leave and come to Kentucky, if he were to leave and come to Kentucky, then you got Calipari over at Arkansas, who say what you want to, he's going to recruit a bunch of good players there. They're going to just no, like right. when we saw they Alabama are. went there in I Lexington. No when they turn it on, they can be awesome. And but now they don't turn it on all the time. That, okay, that's so right. be it. That's right. Um, you still got Alabama and Auburn at, at their high points. Uh, you still got Bud William over at Texas A&M, who I adore. I think he's awesome. But he's knocked down a few bigs. You got Texas and Oklahoma coming into the league. Texas made the tournament. Oklahoma barely you got missed Florida it. that's playing pretty good. Uh, Golden, Todd Golden over at Florida is doing some nice things. The South Carolina coach just won uh, Coach of the Year. Yeah, that's right. Um, Chris Jans isn't bad. Chris Jans, uh, yeah. I mean, Arkansas is apparently giving him a look. I thought that would have been. You got look, Beard, I like Beard Chris Jans, but Beard at Ole Miss. It's um, gonna be brutal. Rick man. Barnes Rick just Barnes made an elite, yeah, elite eight. No kidding. Um, good God. I mean, I don't. This is like playing SEC baseball. It's going to be, I mean, or football. It's going to be, it's just a meat grinder. Now, we don't know who Vanderbilt's going to, Vanderbilt hasn't hired anybody, to my knowledge, have they? No, not that. Are well, we yeah, just, they have. I think they have. Are we, are, as SEC fans, just all looking around, like, trying to ignore Vandy, hoping they just leave the party? You know how, like, if, maybe none of y'all ever been this guy, I've been this guy. But when you show up at a party and nobody wants to talk to you until you eventually leave, they're like, I'm glad that. SOBs out of here. I think that's what we're doing with Vanderbilt. We're just, yeah, hey, Vandy comes hey, over and goes, hey, what, you, what you guys doing? Y'all just don't pay attention to yeah. it. He'll leave. Vandy so. goes, hey, 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 Brent, what's up? Kids, <laughs> hey, Alabama, hey, Auburn, what you doing? They're like, yeah, man, we, we're just chilling. It's all good. Yeah. Hey, I got to go uh, make a phone call. Hey, yeah. hey, no doubt, no doubt. Because I use a pay phone. What are they doing? <laughs> Nobody uses They it. won the national championship in Winterman's Bowling. I know that. And I know they've won the national championship in baseball. They got in the last baseball. Ten years. They got baseball. They're in second in the East in baseball. So basketball, they've been stinky bodinky for the last few. years. You know, and they used to have a decent program in basketball. <coughs> that 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 was something that well, you you can't now if you don't have NIL. And they don't that's have right. They don't have I don't NIL. think they do have a coach, Brett. They may not. Have By a God, coach. if they got one, I, that's how bad it is. I don't know. But who me the and you don't is. even know how how bad is that. So uh, if somebody out there knows, uh, tell us about it. Uh, I mean, I, you know, again, I, that is crazy. I thought I read that they hired somebody, but um, I, I, I I appreciate that guy. Yes, just they did. Goodbye. They have. Who? Uh, James Madison's Mark Byington is the next. Well, they did make the NCAA tournament. Yeah, that's who it is. I thought I remember hearing this somewhere. When did it happen? That's the crazy now, thing. He apparently was a pretty good coach. A lot of people thought. That um, his team would upset. Uh, that happened on March 25th, by the way. Wisconsin, they they did, didn't they? Beat Wisconsin they in the did, tournament they this did, year. And they then, did. And when that was nice, um, they hired him when? On March 25th. Oh, I was in at the Bahamas, and I was thinking about a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was had cool breeze. And it wouldn't have mattered if you'd have been in Timbuktu. I could, yeah, sure, I could have, have been, right. I could have been over at Mike Byington's house <laughs> and not known about it. <laughs> His wife didn't know he, that he Is it, what, that he Where's your done. daddy been all this time? He's <laughs> in Nashville coaching. He's doing what? <laughs> yeah, again, you talked about them knocking off uh, Wisconsin. <laughs> they did. So, uh, again. Um, I just hope he has a good buyout. That's all. Right, because he ain't, hey, look, you ain't doing nothing. <clears throat> he's laughing, laughing all the way to the bank. I'm sure, because he's gonna no get doubt. paid pretty good. Again, hey, <laughs> we've seen in football you can do this. You can go up there, stink it up, get you a big. I, bye -bye I don't know why we haven't done this. Why didn't we go do this? I mean, we can <laughs> well, go I lose. Guess you do hey, it. Brian Harson showed the blueprint. He he pulled off the biggest scam in in the history of modern day college football. What, what he, they should do the movie. <laughs> Now, uh, what was that movie? Catch me if you can. He was catch the, me if you, you can. You know who too. Brian Harson was? He was the the bishop 
uh, sycamore <laughs> of, co coach, of coaches. That's what he probably I, did. He probably went to Auburn <laughs> with his resume. Look, I, I learned none of the best over at Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> but that's I mean, he, I hate to be that way, but that's my God, dude. I mean, it, terrible. And who was your athletic director? Alan Green. Alan, and he was the president of – he was the principal at Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> they, they could do a, a Netflix documentary <laughs> on Alan Green negotiating with Brian Harson. Brian Harson goes, I, ain't I don't know. I ain't coming for less than two know. million. Alan Green goes, three million then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, it ain't supposed to work like that, but okay. okay. Hey, but I guess that's the kind of negotiation that goes on when you're – at a hotel in a hot tub hanging yeah. out with each other. I mean, <laughs> that, I mean, and Alan Green tells that story. He's like, yeah, man, you know, me and Brian Arson uh, were at this conference and we were sitting in a hot tub. We were at a day's end. Yeah, I mean, we were in a hot tub together and I just told him, I'm going to sign him up, yeah. man. We're going to get you to See, come. What you, what you doing for I next do, year I and I vaguely half. remember when we were talking about the coaches for Auburn when Gus Malzahn left. <clears throat> There wasn't a single solitary human being on planet Earth that said or thought Brian Harson would be the next coach at all. It was so out in out in the open, out in space, and that when he was named, I think everybody went, "Hope oh, maybe they know something we don't, and maybe this guy's about to come in here and be the next best thing since Blythe." But the only Brent. thing that made you think that, bro, <clears throat> and I remember being in the car because it was you so and Randy. Daggum. No, I remember being in the car coming with back you from Randy. the Alabama Mississippi. No, going to the Alabama Mississippi okay. game. When they announced that Gene Chizik was the coach, right. and y'all were like, "God Almighty!" Next thing you know, he wins the national championship, and so now because it's like right. I said with right. the Final Four, now that Auburn and Alabama have broken the glass ceiling, every year we go, we're like, "We can get there." That's right. Before we would have never even dreamed to put right. our names in the Final Four because we're like, "We're not going to get there." Right. But now we think we'll go there every year. Right. But because Gene Chizik won one, <laughs> you're like, "Maybe Brian, maybe maybe, maybe. Brian Arson." Not, uh, and and we <laughs> yeah. Bishop Sycamore called and said, hey, we, we need you to come back. We need you to come. But again, Bishop you know, Sycamore hadn't won a game since hey, he left. We, we make fun of Brian Harson all day. We know, that man cashed a check. Oh, look, He's set for life. His children are set for life. His great-great-grandchildren are set it's, for life. I mean, it's, you can be the biggest screw-up in the history and cash such a big – Life-changing check. It you don't really care what he. While he's in mm -hmm. Thailand, he's like, mm -hmm, y'all just keep talking. I'm drinking out of this coconut. That, that, exactly. Uh, that, that's exactly right. You, go, it's, it's a, you go to your forty-hour-a-week yeah. grind job, yeah. and I'll 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 keep holding yeah. this beach down yeah. for you. How about that? So, uh, it, yeah, laughs on us really at the end of the day. But uh, we're gonna laugh ourselves right on out. That means the show is over. And uh, again, uh, because God, we didn't sign be a contract, because we didn't sign a contract like Brian Arson, <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow for another <laughs> another edition of uh, Auburn Blitz, so we can laugh and talk about Brian Arson. Randy, so. if you want to buy him out, <laughs> I'm telling you, buy both of us out. I mean, right? I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Take so, a pack of ho hos and the cheese. Sandwich. And then Randy's like, who's gonna buy me out? Hey, you buy me out, and I'll turn around and buy you out. <laughs> yeah. We still stay at square one. So, All right, let's go wrap it up for Sports Blitz Live. Again, we appreciate everybody watching and listening. We will see you tomorrow again uh, at noon for Auburn Blitz. For Luke Robinson, I'm Brett Bruce saying we've enjoyed it. We'll be out. See you next time. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the roads of Alabama calling. And Sarah Honda has your answer. Serving you for over 40 years with one of the largest Honda and pre-owned inventories in the state and the Sarah Promise. Our best deal when you buy or trade, a 72-hour exchange policy, a no-hassle trade-in promise. Written offers are good for seven days. And our best service promise. Our factory certified technicians help keep your vehicle running smoothly. That's why Alabama can be yours to discover in a new vehicle from Sarah Honda in Sylacauga. Farmers and Merchants Bank of Dadeville is building a foundation of strength and trust in the entire Lake Martin community. With our modern branch in Dadeville and caring attentive staff, we've established Farmers and Merchants Bank as a reliable friend to your banking needs. Whether it's just a savings or checking account or any commercial auto or real estate loan, Farmers has local decision making to build a relationship with you and your needs. Farmers and Merchants Community Bank. Strength. Service. Community. Lee Apparel is your go-to vendor for screen printed and embroidered apparel and promotional products. We print and embroider free custom made graphics or outsource designs on everything from t-shirts, headwear, corporate wear, team sportswear, high-end safety apparel and promotional products. At Lee Apparel you can always expect quick turnaround time, 
competitive pricing, friendly customer service, and free in-hands delivery on all orders. Visit us at leahperil.com to get started. This is Kalija Country, Lake Martin's best country. Kalija Country 97.5. Martin's best country, Elijah Country 97.5. There's a new standard for the marine industry on Lake Martin, being set by Momentum Marine Lake Martin. Momentum Marine is located at the Blue Creek Bridge on Highway 49 South. Stop by soon and meet less than the staff. While you're here, take a look at our extensive line of boats. Momentum Marine carries Crest, Manitou, Centurion, Monterey, and Rabalo boats. Whatever your boating needs or dreams, the pros in Momentum will help you find the perfect boat. Be sure to ask about our brand new rental fleet. Stop by Momentum soon and experience the difference. Let Momentum Marine show you how to experience freedom on the water. Are you waking up in the morning with a sore jaw, headaches, maybe even ringing in your ears, all because you're grinding and clenching your teeth at night? That's exactly what was going on with me. That's when I found this, the Brux Night Guard. Now the Brux Night Guard redirects the bite force away from the back teeth, reducing jaw pain while still protecting the teeth. This unique design is what makes Brux Night Guard different from all other traditional grind guards. Go to BruxNightGuard.com and order yours today. There's a new standard for the marine industry on Lake Martin, being set by Momentum Marine Lake Martin. Momentum Marine is located at the Blue Creek Bridge on Highway 49 South. Stop by soon and meet less than the staff. While you're here, take a look at our extensive line of boats. Momentum Marine carries Crest, Manitou, Centurion, Monterey, and Rabalo boats. Whatever your boating needs or dreams, the pros in Momentum will help you find the perfect boat. Be sure to ask about our brand new rental fleet. Stop by Momentum soon and experience the difference. Let Momentum Marine show you how to experience freedom on the water.